Book today at traveldepartment.com with great special offers. Travel Department. Let's see more. Thinking about saying goodbye to diesel? Making the move to hybrid is easier than ever thanks to Toyota Approved Used. Choose from an extensive range of used Toyota hybrids, including the iconic Corolla and the bold and beautiful Toyota CHR. Tested and approved by Ireland's most trusted car brand. All our cars come with a 12-month comprehensive warranty with flexible payment options available. Talk to Kelly's Toyota about Toyota Approved Used. Toyota, built for a better world. T's and C's apply. Paco Letter Kenny are celebrating five years open this week with an up to 50% off Bonanza on all new season Paco, Regatta and Fruitwear. Yes, that's right. Up to 50% off at Paco in Letter Kenny Retail Park this week only. It's nine o'clock and we're going to pass you over to Greg Hughes. Greg, good morning. Wow, you're quick on it. Oh, I can't believe two Boom. days in a row. Come on. Come on, mm -hmm. have a goodie. What are you going to do today? Oh, a little bit of this, that and the other. <laughs> That's, a, that's <laughs> not a good one. Somebody said that to me. He said, what are you doing today? Ah, a little bit of this. What, is that all you're going to be doing? A bit of that and the other. And that's, this, that that's and the other. saying nothing, isn't it, Sounds really? Sounds a wee bit sneaky. It is sneaky. All right, OK. Good well, luck. enjoy your this, that and the other. It is nine o'clock. Uh, time for a news update. It's over to Donna Marie Doherty. Thanks, Greg. Good morning. Today marks five years since journalist Lyra McKee was shot dead in a riot in Derry. At the time of her death, Stormont had collapsed and during her funeral, the priest received a standing ovation for calling out politicians and urging them to work together. Five years on and Stormont's just a few months back together from yet another collapse. Lyra's partner Sarah hopes it's for good this time. Stormont's been down more than it's been up since its instrumentation and Lyra was you know, very passionate about that and about the fact that when the government's down, it's the people who suffer. Jet ski safety signs are repeatedly being removed from Glenburn Beach and Sweet Nellie's Beach in Inishone. Local councillor Martin Farron says he's confused as to why people would do this on a continuous basis. He says the signs were put in place to keep everyone safe, particularly children, from jet skis being launched too close to the shoreline. Councillor Farron is now unsure on how to move forward with a long-term solution. But we have run into a problem. We have indeed, and... Uh... In two or three occasions now, the, the, the Donegal County Council and Environment Section of Donegal County County, in fairness to them, have gone back and put these signs back up again. And they were put up fairly strongly. They, were, you know, they weren't just set up there on the poles. They were put, put up there quite tightly. But for some reason or other, some, I'm sure a small minority of people thought it was, uh, they felt that they could just take them down. A 17-year-old who was arrested in Derry yesterday has been released on bail. It was in relation to a report of criminal damage on Waterloo Street on Tuesday. PSNI say it's to allow further inquiries to go. The decision to hold leaving certificate changes until 2025 has been described as a fair move. Grades were artificially inflated by 7% after state exams resumed following the pandemic and that's set to be gradually reduced. Education Minister Norma Foley says it will have dropped to around 5.5% by next year. Looking now to weather, mostly dull and damp today with outbreaks of patchy rain and drizzle at times through the day. Highest temperatures of 8 to 11 degrees and a moderate to westerly wind increasing fresh west to northwest. That's all for now from Highland Radio News. We'll be back again at 10 o'clock. Menopause can be a challenging time of life. I'm Lorraine Keane and I choose Irish supplement Clean Marine Menamin because it's Ireland's number one clinically proven peri and menopause supplement for daily nutritional support. Trusted by thousands of Irish women for over 10 years, Menamin contains omega-3 DHA to support brain health and vitamin B6, which contributes to the regulation of hormonal activity and all in just two capsules a day. Ask for Menamin at health stores and pharmacies and learn more at cleanmarine.ie. And now it's time for the talk of the Northwest, the nine to noon show with Greg Hughes on Highland Radio. Hello, good morning to you. Just approaching four minutes past nine on this Thursday, the 18th of April, 2024. And you're very welcome along to another edition of the nine till noon show. And we've got your great usual mix of uh, uh, the latest in news, uh, features about people's lives, their conversations, and also your views, all of it very, very important to us, of course, it, what makes the show. Uh, and we want you involved in the conversation throughout the three hours. 086 6025000. WhatsApps and texts 
to that number 0866025000. You can also send your WhatsApp voice notes to 0866025000. If you want to give us a call, uh, we'd love to chat to you too. 0749125000. Caroline and Shannon, not yet replaced by AI, but possibly uh, by the end of 2025, we read. And if you want to email us, it's comments at highlandradio.com. They can get us uh, from anywhere at any time. That's including if you're listening to the podcast or listening uh, overnight. If you want to watch the show, uh, don't forget you can do so if you're at home on your smart TV or your Fire Stick. We're on the YouTube app, Highland Radio Ireland. Uh, we're across the X platform and also on Facebook, Highland Hub, Highland News and Sport. Thursday morning's always busy because lots and lots of newspapers are published on a Thursday. Uh, and the Chaconnell Tribune is amongst them and their headline, New Location Proposed for uh, Chrysler uh, Shop. The planning application for um, the site of the uh, Chrysler tragedy uh, has been submitted and there is uh, drawings proposing uh, what would stand on that uh, site. And I'll read on the article here, the proposal to construct a new shop in Chrysler shows the development will not be on the footprint of the original building where 10 people lost their lives on October 7th, 2022. Uh, it's not clear from the pictures precisely where it is to be located, uh, but the shop is to be turned sort of side on and on the right-hand side of the site, uh, then there are uh, petrol pumps to the left of it, uh, sort of facing in and out the way is how you would um, pump petrol or diesel. Uh, the proposed project will see an integrated development that will include a green space or a future memorial, we're told. The architectural installation of 10 lighted poles will be close to the shop, door and will be in the most prominent location close to the shop. This is seen as being front and centre of the overall site. The multi-million euro project, the biggest ever investment in Chrysler, is seen as a vote of confidence in the community by the developer. Vivo Shell Limited, in tandem with the Village Regeneration Project. These are tentative steps, I read, for a new dawn on the long road to recovery. Uh, planning permission is being sought by the company and they hope the proposal will be viewed by the planning authority, families of the deceased, those injured and the public that significant consideration has gone into the application in respect of the wishes of all of those involved. And um, uh, just in that regard... The planning application will be, uh, as far as I'm aware, I think it's been stated quite publicly, the planning application will be uh, judged on planning matters uh, solely. Um, that's that process. Um, OK, on to the Donegal news. A Donegal man whose leg was crossed by rubble during the Chrysler explosion in 2022 will mark a remarkable recovery by running a marathon for charity this weekend. Dylan McGee. Uh, was one of the eight people hospitalised following the tragic explosion that claimed the lives of 10 people in October 7th, 2022. Chrysler man uh, Dylan, who's a medical student in Dublin, spoke of how he uh, nipped into the Apple Green shop on his way home from college uh, that Friday and more on his story uh, on the inside of the Donegal News this morning. The Derry News, their headline, major blow for Waterside. The Waterside area of Derry was dealt a massive blow this week on Monday. Um, on Monday, in was revealed, or it was revealed, uh, that popular award-winning restaurant, the Sooty Olive, the Waterside Theatre and the PSNI Inquiry Office would all be closing down. The reasons behind the closure were due to ongoing uh, financial pressure. On to the Ash, uh, on to the Nationals now, and uh, on to the Irish Times. Firstly, um, airlines could face higher fines and be subject to tougher legal obligations to check the documents of passengers flying into Ireland under proposed new immigration reform. A new gate check program could see airlines escape fines. However, if they put in place an audited higher standard of document checking, along with uh, dedicated. Uh, security procedures at embarkment. Now, like, I've been on an airplane. Sorry, I've tried to board an aer airplane um, coming back into Ireland. And um, on my passport, my name's Gregory, okay? And um, I accidentally put Greg in as my name um, for the booking. And went up to passport control, and it was queried that... I, it was queried that my passport read Gregory and my boarding card read Greg. And uh, it was a bit of a, a hoo-ha, to be honest with you, and it got sorted in the end. But that's how picky they can be. 
Now, that's only my one experience that happened. But what I don't understand is why there needs to be new regulation. I it's find it, re like, in that experience, really tough to get through uh, security at times. But the government feel that they have to increase fines or further legal obligations that people are able to get on planes and get off them without documents or the documents aren't real. Like, it doesn't feel like... I could get around that myself, but obviously people know how to do it. Well, new information provided to the Dáil's Public Accounts Committee, seen by the Irish Times, shows the government may seek to tighten rules around documentation. Secretary-General in the Department of Integration, Kevin McCarthy, is also due to appear before PAC this morning and will tell uh, TDs where has recently been a further significant upward trajectory in international protection arrivals. In the first 12 weeks of 2024, over 5,100 people claimed international protection compared with 2,900 people for the same period in 2023. A more than 70% increase in arrival numbers. Uh, procuring bed space continues to remain extremely challenging, he will say, especially for single males. Now, currently, there's almost 2,000 of them living on the streets or in tents. Uh, but that's not discouraging arrivals because uh, the number of arrivals is uh, heading towards double uh, compared to the first three weeks or compared to a similar three weeks of uh, 2023. Uh, but as I say, my experience of airport security normally is that it's incredibly thorough, but obviously uh, people know ways around that. It's a huge day for uh, families of the Stardust uh, victims today. Uh, the jury in the Stardust inquest has uh, reached a made sorry, a majority verdict almost a year after the inquest uh, began into the deaths of the 48 victims of the nightclub tragedy. This is the Irish Independent, by the way. The verdict is to be delivered from 2pm today at the Dublin District Coroner's Court. The long-awaited inquests into the tragedy, which re-examined the circumstances relating to the deaths of 30, uh, 48 young people following a fire at the North Dublin nightclub in February 1981, were first ordered by the Attorney General in September of 2019. In in the early hours of February 14th, 1981, at the close of a Valentine's Day disco dancing competition, a fire ripped through the venue in Artane, North Dublin. Those who died were between the ages of 16 and 27. A further 89 were hospitalised and 15 of those were seriously injured. There were more than 800 people at a disco on the night. And uh, 40 years on, uh, the families uh, and those there are many, many people who were waiting for this, unfortunately, who at uh, time it was against them because it took so, so long uh, that we'll never um, hear the findings of uh, that inquest, but those that survive will later today. The Irish Daily Mail this morning. Senator Lisa Chambers is at odds with her Fianna Fáil colleagues over calls for all migrants to face deportation if they commit a crime. The Fianna Fáil senator, who is the government lead in the Shannad, includes even those who've been granted refugee status amongst those who need to be sent back if they break the law. However, fellow Fianna Fáil senators and the party's justice spokesperson have disagreed with her stance. Speaking at the party's Ardesh at the weekend, Senator Chambers said, My view is that there's nothing stopping us from deporting somebody who commits a crime in the state. Anybody who comes into this country or if they're seeking asylum or have been granted refugee status, if you break the law, you need to be sent back. And that's what the public are asking for, she said. Her comments came as an internal Fianna Fáil document on immigration called for asylum seekers who commit a serious crime while awaiting a decision in their international protection applications to be uh, deported. But Senator Chambers going uh, beyond that, it would seem. Turning our attentions now to the front of the Farmers' Journal and Minister for Agriculture Charlie McConnell Oge has ruled out introducing any scheme to compensate dairy farmers to cull cows from their herds. An exit and reduction scheme had been recommended by uh, the Food Visionary uh, Food Vision Dairy Group. While I can control, sorry, while I can't control the market or the weather, I can give clarity around certain policy directions, including. Uh, taking the dairy cow reduction scheme off the table, the minister told the Irish Farmers Journal. Uh, interesting decision from Helen McEntee. Uh, it's covered in most papers, including the Star. Uh, Justice Minister Helen McEntee is staying away from the conference 
of the biggest Garda representative body after it snubbed Commissioner Drew Harris. A spokesperson for Miss McEntee last night confirmed she would not be attending next week's annual delegate conference of the Garda Representative Association made up of 11,000 members of the force. The spokesperson said the Minister for Justice had written to the GRA to tell them that she's not in a position to attend their conference. The decision comes in the wake of the GRA's move not to invite Mr Harris to the conference held in Westport, Mayo. Now, we're in an interesting space now where, you know, the Justice Minister, uh, who is, you know, de facto sort of, I suppose, head, uh, she's above Drew Harris, Drew Harris is above the Gardaí, not, not turning up at the conference. It's quite significant, I think. And is that sort of where we're at now, that if you don't like something, you just... Avoid doing it with uh, little or no consequences. We'll see how that uh, goes uh, for uh, her. Uh, I'm sure the Guardian will have something to say about that. The Irish Sun this morning, uh, lots of you uh, either got Taylor Swift tickets or continue to try and get your hands on Taylor Swift tickets. So you might have an interest in this one uh, and it might not come as a surprise to you. Dublin is among the most expensive European cities to attend Taylor Swift's uh, Eras tour, a new study has found Superstar Swift, 34, will perform at the Aviva Stadium uh, in the capital on June 28th, 29th and 30th. Betting company well, I'm not interested in betting here, let's go a bit further down um, well this company, they examined uh, the average cost of a hotel for one night the price of a meal in a mid-ranged restaurant and the cost of a bottle of water and the cost of a five mile taxi journey. It found Dublin ranked third with the night costing a total of €158. Euro. Zurich in Switzerland tops the list with the night costing €213. Uh, Euro. um, but you could go to Warsaw in po uh, po Poland and the whole lot would cost you 63 quid, 63 euro. <clears throat> but we are the third most expensive to go and see um, Tay Tay in uh, Europe. And uh, lastly, uh, young men in Ireland are bombarded with misogynistic content on social media, a study suggests. This is in the Irish Daily Mirror. Uh, and what, what's happening here is these are our children that we don't really... I mean, we, we, have a, we keep an eye on them, what they're doing on social media, but apps like uh, particularly TikTok at the moment, uh, we've talked previously about the very clever algorithms that they have and how they can continue feed you certain types of information. If you show any interest in it at all, it can draw lots more of that information and continue to feed that to you. Uh, it's among a number of apps that um, young men can find themselves being bombarded with a certain way of thinking, a certain attitude towards themselves and a certain attitude towards uh, women. Dublin City University's Anti-Bullying Centre reported that 61.5% of content recommended to young men by YouTube Shorts, which is the rival to TikTok, and 34.7% by TikTok itself was toxic. The study conducted by Professor Debbie Ging, uh, Dr. Catherine Baker and Dr. Uh, Maya Andreessen tracked content recommended to 10 experimental or sock puppet accounts on blank smartphones. Within the first 23 minutes, all accounts were fed uh, masculine, um, masculinist, anti-feminist and other extremist content. YouTube and TikTok have been contacted for uh, comment. None of that surprises me, uh, to be honest with you. And if you keep getting fed the same stuff, it is going to affect perhaps uh, how you think. Right, 086 60 25,000. That's the WhatsApp and text number. Daily newspapers are courtesy of Kelly Centra and Diner Mountaintop Letter Kenny, winner of Best Family Dining at the Highland Radio Hospitality Awards. The Nine Till Noon Show is brought to you by Letter Kenny Credit Union, offering low rate car loans with fast approval. Apply online at letterkennycu.ie or in office today. It's the Right Price Tiles and Wood Flooring biggest ever sale. Up to 50% off everything in store. All tiles, all wood flooring, all outdoor slabs, cladding and bathware. Everything slashed in price. This sale is not to be missed. The Right Price Tiles and Wood Flooring biggest ever half price sale is now on. Hi, Paddy here at Shane Conley Cars in Donegal Town. Are you looking to upgrade your car? With Shane Conley Cars, you'll find makes and models for every budget. Great finance options and we also accept trade-ins. Check out shaneconleycars.com or call in to us at Shane Conley Cars from Lonnerhill Road, Donegal Town. 
creative landscaping works are the Donegal distributors of millboard cladding and decking. Thanks to its unique polymer resin construction, this decking and cladding doesn't deteriorate like natural wood and won't be beaten for durability. It also has superb slip resistance even when wet and every board is produced using recycled materials. Live life outside with millboard at Creative Landscaping Works, Lisnen and Letterkenny. See creativelandscapingworks.com. TFI Local Link operates evening and weekend services throughout rural Ireland to help you stay connected seven days a week. We know life doesn't just happen nine to five, so if you're commuting, shopping, visiting family, or going out in the evenings or on the weekends, let TFI Local Link take you there. Visit transportforireland.ie. The blockbuster production of Wicked returns to the Borgosh Energy Theatre Dublin, featuring Oscar and Grammy Award winning music. Highland Radio are not missing out. Join us on Friday the 9th of August as we take part in the magic. Your place includes luxury transfers, overnight stay in the Four Star City North Hotel Dublin and your ticket to the show. Call us today on 074 91 25000 or book your place through the outlet at highlandradio.com Now we're joined on the programme by Donegal's Rory Gallagher he's owner of the Irish Viking Bar in Lanzarote and former owner uh, as you would know of the Island Bar in Lanzarote as well Rory how are you getting on good to uh, speak to you again uh, good to chat to you, yeah. How are you, Greg? I'm doing good. This has kind of gone over my head a little bit until recently. Uh, uh, tourism protests are taking place on the island of Lanzarote, or is it the Canaries more generally? What's actually happening over there, Rory? Uh, yeah, no, they're taking place uh, this last few months, you know, more so in um, Tenerife, uh, where it got a bit angrier. Um, Grand Canary, but they're here as well. There's a, another big one on Saturday. And um, I think it's just, um, to be honest, it, it seems a bit more frightening when it's put down as a headline. You know that you know that locals don't want tourists. So that's not really the case. It's it's more to do with um, housing and wage inequality. And uh, you know, just it's it's really hard for even we find for our staff just to get like a, an apartment for a month. You know, it, it's it's been taken over by Airbnb and landlords, and the government's not stepping in. You know. And um, what is the the what is the mood on? You're in Lanzarote, aren't you? That's obviously where your bar is at the moment. Well, what have you been hearing from from Tenerife, where things have been a little bit more edgy? Uh, I think it's just it's really the the pictures of the graffiti, you know, and all. It's probably just uh, younger people that haven't got a false uh, idea of what's going on, and you know, you always get the little five percent crazy right wingers that'll spray tourists go home on walls and you know but that's more to do with probably that their older brother or sister can't get an apartment to live in because it's being rented out for three times the price from airbnb to to tourists coming over you know and um, but this is nothing new i mean these have been very very popular tourism destinations for uh for years obviously um do we know why this is happening now or what is changing i think it's just that there's uh you know, obviously, population grows all the time. The Canarian population is growing like the rest of the planet. So there's there's more people, but there's probably um, a lot of the same amount of buildings. And any time the government does, uh, you know, do a new building, it's a hotel. Mm. It's not a it's not somewhere for locals to live. So I think there's just they're just starting to feel disillusioned. And I know, you know, it's terrible. Where you know it is their it's their country, and you know, you know maybe six or seven of them have to live in a small house now because. The younger siblings and all that can't afford to to get their own place, so so they're you know, be, they, they're they feel the they're being squeezed out of their home line, uh, their homeland, effectively for the quick book of the tourist. That's exactly it, yeah, and it's just going to lead to anger if the government don't step in, because there is ways around it. You know, it doesn't. Um, there should be more regulations on uh, on Airbnb how it's used, and you know, that's not the only company. I don't want to go online. And, no, no, I know what you're on about. Just, yeah, you're, I, you're on about uh, short term letting, really, effectively, and and people know what you're talking about. Well, that's it. Yeah, you, you know, if you've got a, a small villa with a swimming pool, and uh, you're from Roscommon or Germany, you're not even in the country. You, you can lease that for say five grand a month, um, whereas you know. 
uh, 15 years ago, that would have only been one grand, one grand a month to, to whoever was here, you know. Probably not uh, surprising uh, that the uh, British press uh, are taking this incredibly personal and saying, you know, should we boycott Tenerife? Should we boycott Lanzarote? Um, but that's a whole other conversation about that attitude. But at the end of the day, you do still want to feel welcome as a tourist. Uh, would Is this going to put people off landing there, even if they're sympathetic to, you know, uh, the locals' concerns? Um, I suppose that, that's a good question. You know, it, it, it doesn't, there doesn't seem to be any bad vibe here at the minute, to be honest, you know, and a lot of the... Um, the expats, as you would call them over here, uh, you know, no, no British person wants to be called an immigrant. <laughs> they, funny, um, if you yeah. go to England, you're an immigrant. If you go out of England, you're an expat. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so they're but they're actually all on the side of the protest, and they, they get it completely. Everybody gets it. You know, it's just it's governments not stepping in, you know, because they don't want to trample on the foot of uh, of big business. The usual type thing, you know, and um, and also there's a kind of a, a DNA in the Canaries, especially in in Lanzarote, of um, keeping it uh, beautiful and natural. You know, there was a, a really famous artist called Cesar Manrique, and uh, he was kind of a, the the head, the joint head of the government in the the 50s, 60s, 70s, and he was he was a friend of Andy Warhol's in the USA, but a real true artist. But I don't know, anybody that's been to Lanzarote might notice that, like, you can only use white, green, blue on, on a house, you know, and that they were his colours. And, it, and it, mm-hmm. you couldn't have high-rise like Benidorm. He wanted to avoid, you know, many skyscrapers ruining the, the skyline. And uh, so that that's kind of in Lanzarote, people of, like, keep it, uh, you know, a beautiful type island, you know, rocks, sand, sea, um, and, and lots of you know, natural habitat. And so I, I totally get it. But this is at, at this stage, uh, Rory, have you any concern that views could harden, you know what I mean, that maybe it will get to the point whereby tourists will not feel welcome if the protesters feel they're not getting, uh, if they, they feel if they're not getting what they want, or that even maybe people like yourself living and working and supporting uh, the island in, in terms of employment or what have you, that attitudes could change to the like of yourself. If, if Because you know for a fact there are elements that will look at this and will, be, will, will see this as an opportunity to push their own agendas too. Uh, yeah, completely. I mean, I, you can't... Uh, all you can ever do, I feel, is like just see how things are in the moment, and uh, and and don't panic about things turning sour too much, or, or you'll never sleep at night. You know that mm. that that could be anything uh, worldwide. Uh, so, uh, you know, at the, at the moment, everybody's on their side. It's fine. Uh, of course, it can sour, but but we're hoping that it won't get to that. that that's all you can say, really. Right. And what's planned for this weekend? Is it in Lanzarote? A protest is 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 planned. Uh, yeah, in, in uh, Arrecife, in the capital. Okay. That's on Saturday. And uh, I think there'll, there'll be loads of, um, uh, you know, there'll be loads of uh, Irish joining in, hopefully. Yeah, OK. It's interesting, as I say, and, and I think it's going to develop. Uh, how's things going for you over there, uh, Rory? Good, yeah. We, we had, um, obviously, we had the, the Island Bar here for years, and um, uh, we moved home uh, in 2018, and then all of a sudden, you know, we were not sure what to do. Then the pandemic kicked in, blah, 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 blah. But kind of, we, we started making moves back here. We had a little place called Rory's Corner Bar for a year and a half. And, and we just recently put the lease of that up for sale because a, a, a nicer, bigger, uh, old venue called the Irish Viking came up. So we're actually, believe it or not, launching that tonight uh, officially. We, we've had it open for a few days, but uh, I'm going to be singing in there tonight. So really looking forward to that. My invitation must have got lost in the post, Rory. <laughs> I couldn't afford your plane ticket. <laughs> Don't poor mouth me. <laughs> Come here, Rory. Continued success. Thanks for your insight. Really appreciate it. Take care of yourself. Best wishes to, to all over there. Thanks, Ray. Thank you. All right, bye-bye, Rory. That's uh, Rory Gallagher there. Uh, as I say, I was kind of... Um, I've been out of the, the, the travel scene in inverted commas for a few years, well, before COVID, so wasn't really aware that that was going on. If you've been over there or you have a view on that, uh, many people do, of course, very popular destination, please get in touch with us, 086 60 25,000, 086 60 25,000, or if you prefer, you can give us a call on 074 91 25,000. 
Watch the show live now on YouTube, Facebook, and at HighlandRadio.com. The Nine Till Noon Show with Letterkenny Credit Union. Simplify your debts with a debt consolidation loan from Letterkenny Credit Union. Call us on 074-910-2126 or apply online via our app or in office today. Silage costs to remain high this summer. For more in your Irish Farmer's Journal, here's Paul Mooney. We reveal how much it will cost you to make bale silage this year. Flooding at Roscommon's Loch Funchina, the worst in living memory. Dry stock farmers sleepwalking into nitrates penalties. Everything farmers need to know about the new fodder scheme. Minister kills compensation for dairy exit scheme. High court blocks for the work at Donegal Wind Farm. We analyse Lakeland, Arevo and Arabon annual results. And how to register for the upcoming Renewables Roadshow in Cavan. All inside the Irish Farmer's Journal, on sale now. Now. The Sexist. infection felt terrible. I just wasn't getting better. I was breathing fast and I felt confused. I had shivers and pain through my body. I was drinking water, but I wasn't peeing. I felt like I was going to die. In the hospital, they said I had sepsis. sepsis. And it's urgent. Sepsis can hide behind any infection at any age. So watch out for the signs. Visit hse.ie forward slash sepsis for more information. And don't be afraid to ask the question, could it be sepsis? from the HSC. The CFC Interior Stock Disposal Sale ends this Saturday, the 20th of April. Due to renovations, an incredible £1.5 million worth of stock must go. Don't miss our highest ever discounts on selected ranges across all departments. The Stock Disposal Sale at CFC Interiors Derry. Sale ends this Saturday, the 20th of April. Easy Living Furniture's biggest ever roadshow sale is here. Come discover the amazing roadshow deals such as all sofas reduced, all dining reduced, all bedroom reduced, all mattresses reduced, and with interest-free finance available. This is one sale not to be missed. The spectacular roadshow sale with absolutely everything reduced is now on at Easy Living Furniture, Crescent Link Retail Park, or online at easylivingfurniture.co.uk. I've been surfing all morning at FlemingLTD.com to find out about Fleming doors, Fleming steel and Fleming coatings and their full range of products. So come surfing with me at FlemingLTD.com. Fleming, 91 48 234. Now, taxi numbers in Donegal have declined by almost 18%, or in fact, in excess of 18%, according to new figures from the NTA, highlighting stark regional disparities uh, disparities in access to essential transport. The figures came in response to a recent parliamentary question by independent TD uh, Carol Nolan. Uh, this dramatic drop... Uh, in available taxis raises concerns for the country's vital hospitality industry and everyday passengers, particularly as tourist numbers are expected to surge in the coming months. But also, too, uh, I think we would all agree uh, that the taxi industry for us here in this area and particularly dependent where you are within the region, you know, it's a vital uh, sort of public transport service. Kieran Hart's General Manager for Uber Ireland and he joins us on the programme now. Thank you for your time, Kieran. I do appreciate it. Hi, Greg. Thanks for having me. Um, I wonder what's going on here. Um, like, say, for instance, in terms of door security, what happened was a lot of people were working in that, uh, and when COVID hit, they trained up in other things or moved on to other jobs. A lot of... I wonder, is that the same with, with, with taxiing, that it was tough as it was, and, and I suppose COVID gave, pe- gave people an opportunity maybe to get out of the industry, to, to, to move into some other area, which still talks to the difficult operating conditions. But I wonder, is that perhaps responsible for uh, a lot of this fall? Yeah, that's certainly part of it. Um, and what we're seeing, you know, Donegal, we've seen an 18% drop in the number of taxi licences since 2019. But it's actually been a longer problem. Um, we talk about the number of taxis we've lost in the past five years, but we've been losing taxis since around 2007. That was our peak. And since then, we've lost over 20,000 taxis across the country. So I think the challenge is um, we're certainly making it harder for people to join the industry and we're making it harder for people who might not be five or six days a week drivers. And that particularly hurts areas like Donegal and it hurts those rural towns where mm. people don't necessarily uh, have work that gets them through to Monday to Saturday, but they, they might want to drive Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights, which is when we most need them. Uh, do you think that taxis are seen as a vital part of Ireland's travel infrastructure by the powers that be? It's a really interesting question. And 
we certainly think that they are a really vital part. It's an incredibly important door-to-door -door service. So we celebrate and welcome the launch of, of 24-hour bus routes and all other transport opportunities to give transports more options. But there's always going to be that use case for people needing to get from door to door and a taxi is a vital service for that. When we speak to, uh, we're part of a Taxis for Ireland coalition, which has the Vintners Federation industry, it has Restaurants Association of Ireland, the Irish tourism industry groups as part of that. All of their members are telling us that they're hurting. They're, they're, they're small businesses, the small restaurants, people aren't able to get to and get home from visiting their restaurants right around the country. And it's it's a real problem. We need something that enables uh, these these passengers, these restaurant goers to be able to get home and get out um, reliably. And, and do you know what I would do, Kieran, as well? I would chuck this into the whole conversation that's happening at the moment about road safety uh, because taxis have always been there to get people home you know, safely and security, uh, security, I beg your pardon. I've spoken to taxi drivers in the past in different parts of the air, uh, different parts of this region, I have to say. I'm not pick, picking on any particular region. They've said to me that one of the greatest challenges they have driving at night time is drunk drivers. Uh, you know, and, and more taxi people uh, available, hopefully, would you know, take more of those people off the road. There's more travel options and what have you. So I think there's that. There's definitely supporting sort of the hospitality tourism industry here. But I think, think taxis play a key role too in, or should play a key role in this conversation we're having about road safety at the moment. They really do. And it's an important part to know. And even like we, we really welcome all of the efforts that the NTA are making into, you know, increased walking and cycling routes. That's fantastic, but it's not always going to be the best use case. Coming home from the pubs, obviously, getting on your bike might not be the best option for you. So we need to ensure that there are taxis there that can help people when they most need them. And, and a lot of the time, as you mentioned, when they're most vulnerable. What needs to be done or what is the Taxi for Island Coalition calling for then to try and boost numbers and retain what's there at the moment too, which I presume is a factor? Yeah, look, we're making two... Uh, really simple, we think, asks of the government and the NTA. One is just to bring more drivers into the industry. And importantly, we don't see a lack of interest in joining the industry. We see plenty of people coming to uber.com and wanting to become a, a driver. But they tell us that the biggest challenges for them is, one, the, the area knowledge test, having to memorise all the different streets and routes across the county um, when they only plan on driving in their local town. But even in this day and age, is that not a little bit, you know, archaic and maybe harking back to London taxis and, you know, all this kind of nonsense? I mean, every car now uh, either has uh, sat-nav. We have air codes now. Uh, and if the car itself doesn't have sat-nav, the driver's phone connected to the car has sat-nav. So that's a bit silly, really, isn't it? I, I couldn't agree more. We think that's a really obsolete requirement now. Um, and to be honest with you... Sat-nav technology will always be better than a memory because if there's traffic up ahead or a car crash up ahead, it's the sat-nav technology which will tell you that that route is not the best way to go today. So we absolutely think that that, that should be removed because there's no real benefit for, for passengers or for drivers in, in having to go and study for, for multiple weeks to learn and memorise those streets. Um, and the uh, WAV grant, what's that? So one of the challenges of drivers, the second biggest one, so one is just how do we get more drivers in? Second is just the, the widening the criteria for vehicles to use. So a lot of people come to us and say, um, we're ready to drive, I've got a perfectly suitable vehicle, that's my private vehicle, but at the moment they cannot licence that car, you cannot licence a new taxi unless it's a wheelchair accessible vehicle. Ah, right, I get you. Now, the challenge is obviously that that requires people to have to go out buy a completely new vehicle, um, and the costs for those at the moment are actually unbelievably coming in at around you know, forty to 55,000 euros. So, again, it really stops people that might only be interested in doing this Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights, which is when we most need them, um, from being able to join the industry. So yeah, it has, are, are nuanced, it has to be nuanced. It has to be nuanced, doesn't it? Of course, we want to have uh, a a taxi network that is accessible, but we don't want it to be so er er erroneous that that taxi network is actually much smaller. Exactly. You know, we don't, throw, we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater here. 
Yeah, I, I mean, this, this policy is not working for wheelchair users. So wheelchair users themselves will tell you that they can't rely on taxis to get themselves around. And in fact, with the shrinking supply of, of taxis available, it just means that people who need those wheelchair vehicles, they're actually having to compete against people who don't need those wheelchair vehicles at these peak times. So it is certainly not a policy which is working for anyone at this point. Uh, I'm not sure if this is what you were hinting at earlier on, but is there... Uh, some consideration needed in terms of people who maybe work three nights a week but also can't get alternative employment and, and, and need to be able to access social welfare payments or is there anything there that's of concern to your members? No, we see. Uh, I'm lucky enough to be in a position where I speak to lots of people who are, who are coming to us and, and looking to, to get started. The challenge for most of them is that it really does suit so many use cases and certainly in areas like across the county in Donegal there might only be business for some people during the summer months mm. um, and so what we really want to do is just open up the industry allow drivers to come in use the vehicles the very suitable and road tested vehicles that they have to get licensed um, and to drive when the when the business is there and the demands on them at the moment are really as we can see from the numbers are forcing people more and more out of the industry uh, and just to be clear you can't buy a, a regular inverted commas plate anymore for a taxi it has to be uh, as a listener described it uh, a, a wav plate effectively yeah and that's been the case since 2013 so again right, okay. it has been a a long slide again we're, we're, we're 20 thousand fewer taxis across the country than we were from our peak and again like i can understand the taxis. proportion of it like you know proportionate maybe to the, the 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 population that might require uh, that type of access but i didn't realize that every single new plate had to be uh had to be associated with a wheelchair accessible uh, yeah every option. every new plate since 2013 so if you want to join the industry mm. From 2013, you have to come in with a wheelchair accessible vehicle. Uh, and Anyone what has happened to... These plates are exchangeable, are they? They are not. So the plates are not meant to have a sales value, but what we are seeing is that um, drivers are, are starting to rent out those plates. I'm just wondering what happened to the 20,000 plates from those who aren't in the industry anymore. Are they keeping them? Can you sort of maintain them, tick along until such times they decide what to do with them? Uh or, or are they you, handed back, or what's the situation? You, the only way to hand them on is through a wheel. To be honest with you, so um, that's why we've seen the the volume of them have left the industry. Um, but yeah, I mean the plates themselves aren't meant to 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 hold a value. They're not meant to be um, a commodity. Like yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just about are you the license should just be are you uh, guard vetted and suitable to drive a taxi. A uh, caller says, as a taxi man in Donegal, I found the impact of the local bus service has caused a lot of loss of income for the taxis. I mean, Eamon Ryan's going to love that. Uh, but I suppose, you know, it's only going to be at certain times, given the, the, the frequency that these buses run at. But is that a concern amongst your members, that they're being impacted by uh, local link, etc.? No, not at all. I mean, what we would see, and again, we would welcome multiple transport options because if buses can can bring people into towns and into the restaurants and the pubs um then it's going to mean more business for the taxis on the other side of that in fact a lot of towns suggest that the challenge is that they are left to do the the, the heavy lifting of get, getting everyone home from the night out so no in fact you know more buses will actually just help more people connect with the restaurants and, and small businesses that that we're speaking to. Yeah, okay, well, people will have noticed uh, a significant reduction in available taxis, and now we have a figure on it in excess of 18% in Donegal. Okay, well, we'll see uh, what comes for, from this latest round of publicity uh, that you're engaged in and see if the government heed. Okay, uh, oh, hear, hear it. Thank you very much, Kieran. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Craig. All right, bye-bye. Kieran Hart, General Manager for Uber Ireland, 0866 25,000. Greg, will you please do a slot on your show on the importance of critical illness cover, even a small policy, whatever they can afford, especially people with children? Yeah, sure. If it's of benefit, if it's uh, if it would help people, of course we will. Um, maybe people out there have an experience with critical illness cover and they want to share their stories. Uh, of course, more than happy uh, to do that. We'll set something up.
Um, as it relates to the defective concrete block scheme, a caller says the stress this scheme has caused my family and continues to cause my family is irreparable. It's an absolute builder's nightmare and an ongoing trauma that feels will never end. Greg, this defective concrete block scheme is a nightmare. Donegal County Council have more power than revenue. My family's life is being destroyed by FIR requests and delayed payments. Nothing is streamlined and there's no continuity in reply between different applications. And I think really maybe what the hope is is that, unfortunately, the uh, early applicants, um, you know, this is where experience is going to be learned off of their backs so that future applicants, uh, some of the, the, the obvious pitfalls would be identified i don't know but I, I suspect that that's probably the way it's set up uh can greg i can assure you of late this defective block scheme is not running smoothly payments are being held back with ridiculous further info requests the admin staff are excellent but the technical departments are holding lives to ransom this scheme is a builder's nightmare and withholding payments i feel is a deliberate act to put builders off i don't think there's anything deliberate in it uh, but that's your view okay but i have to throw that in there just to to ensure uh we can be just as balanced as is possible okay more on that and i think a person's um, personal experience of it uh coming up a little later on in the program the nine till noon show is brought to you by letter kenny credit union digital loans now available apply online or via our app today and get your loan transferred directly to your current account Country Sundays at the Clanry Hotel, Letterkenny. This Sunday, 21st, there's Johnny Brady and his band dancing from 9 till 11, admission 15 euro pay at the door. Coming attraction Sunday, 28th, there's Claudia Buckley. But this Sunday, don't miss Johnny Brady at the Clanry Hotel, Letterkenny. Testing, testing. Do you need to get your hearing tested? Test your hearing with a free sample hearing aid from Hidden Hearing. Order your free sample hearing aid today. Call 1-800-370-000 or visit hiddenhearing.ie. Are you building, rebuilding or renovating? What heat pumps or solar panels would suit your build? Come along and speak to the experts. Efficient renewables on heat pumps and solar panels. Get advice on installation and grants available. Visit the Efficient Renewable showroom in Newton Cunningham and see these products in operation for yourself. Giveblood.ie know we can count on you, our community of blood donors, to be there for others in their hour of need. Blood donors from Dunlow and Bunbeg should attend the clinic in the Oakbrook Ballroom in Dunlow on Tuesday 16th of April. And donors from Bally Buffet should attend the clinic in Jackson's Hotel on Wednesday 17th and Thursday 18th. Making an appointment is recommended, so call 1-800-731-137 or visit our website to book your time. New donors are vital. Visit giveblood.ie to check eligibility and clinic details because we count on you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to roll out the red carpet and celebrate the best and brightest in the business world. It's time for the Highland Radio Customer Service Awards in association with Michael Henney's Department Store. From your local community centre, your favourite takeaway to your go-to pet shop, we're recognising the businesses that go the extra mile for you. This award is a great way to show your appreciation for the businesses that make a difference in your life. But you better act fast. The deadline for entries is just around the corner. So visit our website and nominate now. Nominations close Tuesday the 23rd of April. The awards will take place on the 2nd of June. Highland Radio weather updates with Michael Hennies. Support local at Michael Hennies. With 53 years experience in fashion, beauty and home, we're here for you. Plus, enjoy M-Card rewards when you shop in-store at Michael Hennies Bally Buffet. Mostly dull and damp today with outbreaks of patchy rain and drizzle at times through the day. Highest temperatures 8 to 11 degrees and a moderate westerly wind, increasing fresh west to northwest. Right, now we're going to Skull Crone, Dunlow. Margaret Rose Gallagher is a member of the Parents Association there. How are you, Margaret Rose? Are you well this morning? Uh, hi, Greg. How, How are, you, are you? Thanks all, for having me on your show. All good. I'm a bit nervous, but well, I'm okay. <laughs> Take a deep breath, Margaret Rose. This is no issue because you know everything we're going to talk about now. And what I'm going to ask you first, because this is off the back of a fundraiser that's been launched. It's called Sponsor a Square, and we'll talk more about that at the moment. But I want to learn a little bit about Skull Crone, uh, how many pupils there is, and I suppose the current sort of conditions in which they, uh, you know, play and socialise on the grounds of the school, uh, Margaret. So could you tell us about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, at the minute there's under just under three hundred children children enrolled in the school, and the majority of them are playing on a gravel area every day. 
So our aim is to have this area transformed into an all-weather astroturf area. And I think it's important, when I used to hear the word astro, I used to think football pitches. It's not just football pitches. It'll have running tracks, basketball facilities. It will have football pitches, but it'll also accommodate kids who aren't into sports as well. This will make a huge difference to playtime, to PE, to sports days. Yeah, of course it will too. It's a, it's a better environment for, for them to learn their skills and what have you. Um, also to given our climate as well, is it important that uh, a modern day school sort of has facilities that are up to a scratch uh, in a modern way, but also uh, are more accessible all year round, uh, Margaret Rose? Absolutely. I think everyone would agree, Greg, that an all-weather area for kids to be active in is essential on the school grounds in this day and age. Some would even go as far as to say that it's as important as what happens inside the school. Yeah, of course, because, you know, we hear all the time about, uh, you know, uh, increasing levels of childhood obesity and, 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 and also the positive impact on one's mental health exercise can have. Uh, all different types of exercise, not just for the sport, uh, kids that like the traditional sports, etc. And you need the proper facilities for that. Absolutely. Like, I mean, schools are asked to focus on health and well-being, to promote diversity and inclusion. We have 16 different nationalities in our school. We are trying to make our grounds more attractive for kids to get active in. As you said there, Greg, childhood obesity is at an all-time high, but yet we don't fall into any category for funding. Funding is our major obstacle. It's shocking that there's no avenues that we can take to get even help with funding for this. Because you have the space, the land is there. This is just about, you know, having the right surface, the right facilities. It's not about acquiring land or anything, Margaret Rose. It's not. No, it's not. Certainly, we're so lucky in that we have great scope around our school. But there's just nothing to work with. And uh, we talked about this fundraiser. Uh, The quicker the funding is raised, obviously... The, you would hope the less expensive this project might be because we're seeing continuous in- inflation. If this had been done five years ago, for an example, it would cost, I presume, much less than it might now. Absolutely. Like the plans we have at the minute for the work are costing, the costs are coming in at around 100000 Um if we're in a position to start this summer. So as it stands at present, we have from past fundraisers 45000 um in the pot. And I think, Greg, it's very important to add as well that Skull Cronia are very fortunate and that they have an amazing team between the Parents Association and the Board of Management and not forgetting the parents and the staff. We could arrange all the fundraisers in the world, but these are only a success because of the help from parents, from the staff, from the local community. It's, it's actually amazing. Local businesses, one, not even one week into the launch, mm. local businesses are making contact with ourselves to call in you know, would you call and um, we have a donation for you. you know, it's a really good feeling to know that the community are behind this initiative. Um, so, as I say, we already have 45,000 from past fundraisers, mm. so 55,000 to go. But with, I mean, what, with, we were with, a, with what's being planned here, Margaret Rose, isn't it a shame that the, the department can't match fund it? Because there's a decent pot there, not far off half of what it might cost. Uh, and obviously, I'm sure the Department of Education would recognise the strong arguments for this type of a development. It's unfortunate that uh, parents, with the backing, I presume, of the community and the teachers and what have you, are having to go about continuing to sort of raise the total themselves. But as you said a little earlier on, all sort of funding streams have been looked at, and this is seemingly at this stage the only way forward. Yeah, I mean, we had no choice. The funding, well, it's not... We, we've looked, there's there's not just me on the, as part of the committee. You know, the principal is involved, obviously, as well. We've we've all had our own look into this, like, and there's nothing... Like, I would only be too delighted for somebody to come on here now and prove that, you know, that I'm wrong in what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. You no, know, no, no, you said um, through it thoroughly. And, and that's helped. Yeah, of course. You know, we had no choice but go ahead with the sponsor of Square. So, um, so it was launched last Friday night and people can donate through our social media pages. Um, I know, Greg, if you don't mind, I might pass the link on to yourself if you wouldn't mind sharing it on, course, on yeah, the Highland yes, Radio page. Of course, we'll add, you know, share it across our socials. Um, so, and, and also, too, there's a wee dividend, isn't it? Uh, what, what do, other than obviously supporting the school, and schools are so important to our communities, especially, I think, in, in more rural parts of, of the county, uh, what... what Happens if I what happens if I sponsor a square and I will sponsor a square, but what happens if if one does? Thank you, Greg. So, you know, we're 
I suppose I was looking at it all weekend, thinking, how are we going to raise this money? I have no doubt we will. There, it's, you know, not raising it is not an option. Um, like, our children deserve this. Mm. We will do it. So I was looking at the figures, and, you know, we have, I think it's 2,750 squares is what we need sponsored. So, you know, when if people are in a position to do, to sponsor as a square, um, we, you know, as a token of our gratitude, every sponsor will have their name displayed on our Friends of Skull Crony Appreciation Mall when the project is complete. Lovely. Okay. You know, as a thank you from us. And you've broken it down into bite-sized pieces too. 2,750 squares need sponsored. One square is 20 euro. And in doing so, you'll be assisting the provision of running tracks, basketball facilities, football pitches, and areas for children who aren't into sports as well to... Uh, I mean, it's going to transform their playtime and uh, and what have you as well and make it more accessible all year round too as well. Right, OK. So how do people... We're going to share it on our socials as well, of course, Margaret Rose... Uh, but Excellent. if people want to get it on it straight away, how do they find the I Donate page to buy a square or sponsor a square? Yeah, so if you just go into Skull Cronia, um, I Donate page, if you even type it into Google, it should come up. I mean, Donegal Daily went with the story yesterday, so it's on their page. Um, I mean, the whole community seems to be sharing it on their social media. We are looking, I know some parents have come to me about sponsorship cards for people that aren't on social media. These things, all this feedback is so important. This is something we didn't even think of. Just because we're on social media doesn't mean, you know, that everybody is. Yeah, yeah, you're um, right. So th- these are all things that, that we're thinking of. So really, today is about reaching out, I suppose, to, the, to your listeners, and especially to families of past pupils who might now be in a position to give back. I am well aware that the cost of living is, you know, it's, it's going up all the time. I'm not asking people... If they can't, I'm only asking the people that can. Yeah, in of course, position. and it is an investment in our children it's as well. Fun. And of course, too, uh, local politicians, they do have a, a fund available to them. Uh, a wee cut out of that would be helpful too, if uh, any are listening oh, and any have anything left like over. <laughs> uh, the very discretionary fund. Um, I'm, not, I'm sure it's probably very spent good. at this stage. But anyway, who's to say? Okay, uh, you can sponsor or buy a square, 20 euro, and as a um, token of gratitude, every sponsor will have their name displayed on our Friends of Skull Cronia appreciation wall. Uh, all right, okay, listen, thank you very much. You're uh, obviously advocating on behalf of the children. You did fantastic, Margaret Rose. The nerves weren't an issue, and I appreciate your time today. <laughs> thank you so much, Greg. C- Greg, can I just finish off by saying yeah. that we are children's voices. This is our chance to make a difference for them. Don't let them miss out. Indeed, okay. Thanks very much, Margaret Rose. Well done. Thank you very much, Take Greg. Care thank yourself. you. Bye-bye. Bye. 0860 25,000. WhatsApp and text number there. A caller wanted to know, does anyone know where or from whom you can get Tory Clay? I have uh, a number here, so if that person calls back in, we can put you in uh, contact with them. Hi, Greg. I'd appreciate this being read out, please. As a person with autism and who has audio processing disorder, when I rang NowDoc at the weekend, I had to mute my phone to get my partner to help me answer questions. I think the nurse at NowDoc should, or the nurses uh, at NowDoc and other facilities, should ask, are you presenting any neurotypical no neurological disorders or are neurodivergent? Uh, or have autism, ADHD, Tourette's, etc., or would you rather not say? This would help the nurse ask the questions more simply and slowly. Thank you. Okay, that's interesting. I've, that hasn't come across the desk before, uh, but if anyone out there is in a similar position to that listener and would want to lend their support to that point, uh, please get in touch. Uh, I rang a public service office here in Donegal speaking as Gaelica. There was no one to answer me. A message to say that someone would reply to me in due course. I'm still waiting. That's three weeks ago. How can diversity improve the situation? Bend to every group except Indigenous Irish, says a listener. Okay. Hi, Greg. I'm waiting two years for an operation. The AA gave me worldwide insurance. The only thing is they will not cover the area for what you are waiting for, like back or neck. Okay, that's off the back of someone who was looking. They've booked a, a, a trip for next year. The got an operation in the interim they can't get health insurance that caller got it from the aa but the insurance doesn't cover them for the condition for which they might be seeking the operation so maybe that might help the nine till noon show is brought to you by letter kenny credit union with monster loans available up to sixty thousand euro for all occasions visit letterkennycu.ie 
The Donegal branch of the Irish Kidney Association are hosting a service of remembrance and thanksgiving on Sunday 21st of April at 3pm in St Mary's Church, John Arthur, to remember organ donors and donor families. Organ Donor Awareness Week runs from 20th of April to 27th of April. For more information, visit ika.ie. New this week in Home Store and more. All lightweight luggage is all half price. That's right, half price. But better hurry, because when all the half price lightweight luggage is gone, it's gone. Also, all mops and buckets and all mattress protectors are still all half price. But when all the half price mops and buckets and all the half price mattress protectors are gone, they're definitely gone. Drop by your local Home Store and more. Visit us online at homestoreandmore.ie. Home Store and more. A happy home. Are your small appliances due an upgrade? Irwin Expert Electrical, your ultimate destination for all things electrical. From stylish toasters and kettles to innovative coffee machines and air fryers. Or elevate your tech game with our selection of smartwatches, iPads, laptops and phones and TVs from all your top brands. Stay connected with Irwin Expert Electrical, Larry Kenny and Bonkrana. Hi, Bree Jean here from McDade's Bathroom Plumbing Tiles, Bunkrana. Our massive marquee tile sale in Bunkrana is now on, with up to 75% off wall tiles, floor tiles and much more. Grab yourself a bargain this week at McDade's Bathroom Plumbing Tiles, Bunkrana. Never has the need for reliable, trustworthy journalism been greater. If you are a journalism or media student who is about to graduate and are looking to kickstart your career in news or sports, the Learning Waves Journalism Graduate Programme is for you. Learning Waves, along with Commission Newman and Skillnet Ireland, are offering 10 graduates the opportunity to work in one of Ireland's independent radio stations for a period of five months from September 2024. You will work alongside the news and sports editor in the station to learn real workplace skills and judgment and to get your voice heard. You will also undertake a tailored training program devised by Learning Waves. So if you want to progress your journalism career, apply online now at learningwaves.ie. Closing date, May 24th. Live on air, online and on the Highland Radio app, this is Highland Radio News. Good morning, it's Donna Marie Doherty with the news at 10 o'clock. Today marks five years since journalist Lyra McKee was shot dead during a riot in Derry. At the time of her death, Stormont had collapsed and during the funeral, the priest received a standing ovation for calling out politicians and urging them to work together. Five years on and Stormont's just a few months back together after yet another collapse. Lyra's partner Sarah hopes it's for good this time. Stormont's been down more than it's been up since its instrumentation and Lyra was you know, very passionate about that and about the fact that when the government's down, it's the people who suffer. Jet sea ski safety signs are repeatedly being removed from a Glenburn beach and Sweet Nellie's beach in Enishone. Local councillor Martin Farren says he's confused as to why people would do this on a continuous basis. He says the signs were put in place to keep everyone safe, particularly children, from jet skis being launched too close to the shoreline. Councillor Farren is now unsure on how to move forward with a long-term solution. But we have run into a problem. We have indeed, and... Uh on two or three occasions now, the, the, the Donegal County Council and Environment Section of Donegal County Kindness and Fairness to them have gone back and put these signs back up again. And they were put up fairly strongly. They, were, you know, they weren't just set up there on the poles. They were put, put up there quite tightly. But for some reason or other, some, I'm sure a small minority of people thought it was, uh, they felt that they could just take them down. Taxi numbers have dropped in most parts of the country, including in County Donegal. Taxi licence numbers fell in 23 of the 26 counties over the past five years. Monaghan saw the most significant drop with 26% fewer taxis in the county since 2019. Donegal came in seventh at a drop of 18%. The Taxis for Ireland Coalition wants action from the National Transport Authority to increase licence numbers by 30% in the next three years. Here in Hart, the General Manager of Uber Ireland, says taxis have been in decline since 2007. And what we're seeing, you know, Donegal, we've seen an 18% drop in the number of taxi licences since 2019. But it's actually been a longer problem. Um, we talk about the number of taxis we've lost in the past five years, but we've been losing taxis since around 2007. That was our peak. And since then, we've lost over 20,000 taxis across the country. So I think the challenge is we're certainly making it harder for people to join the industry and we're making it harder for people who might not be five or six days a week drivers. And that particularly hurts areas like Donegal. 
The Regional Traveller Health Action Plan was launched in Ballyshannon this week. The aim of the five-year implementation plan is to work together to improve the health experiences and outcomes for travellers. A spokesperson said that while there are ambitious actions within the plan, it highlights the real desire for meaningful change, inclusive collaboration across agency approaches for better health outcomes for the traveller community. The families of the 48 people who died in the Stardust disaster will gather this afternoon to hear the verdicts on what caused their deaths. The verdicts are due to be revealed at 2pm after an inquest which lasted almost a year and 11 days of deliberation. The jury reached its decision yesterday but were asked to wait to deliver the verdict. Reporter Stephanie Rowan says it was down to allow the victims of the family and friends to be there when the news arrived. The four men came back at around a quarter past two and said that they couldn't reach a unanimous decision. And the coroner said, OK, I'll accept a majority verdict. And within 15 minutes, they said they had their decision after that. What Myra Cullen and the coroner asked them to do was she asked them to sit on that verdict. I've never come across this before until this afternoon. A 17-year-old who was arrested in Derry yesterday has been released on bail. It was in relation to a report of criminal damage on the Waterloo Street on Tuesday. PSNI, it says it's to allow for further inquiries. Now for weather, mostly dull and damp today with outbreaks of patchy rain and drizzle at times through the day. Highest temperatures of 8 to 11 degrees in moderate westerly winds, increasing fresh, fresh west to northwest. That's all for now. We'll be back again at 11 o'clock. The obituary notices this Thursday morning, April 18th. The death has occurred of Linda Gallagher, Bomney Letterkenny, reposing at her late residence today and tomorrow from 12 noon until 9pm each day. Family and friends welcome. Removal from there on Saturday, going to the Eternal Light Chapel of Rest Mountain Top Letterkenny for 11am funeral service, followed by interment in Gortley Cemetery. Family time, please, on the morning of the funeral. Family flowers only, please. Donations, if wished, to the Donegal branch of the ISPCA, care of Pasco Blake Funeral Director. The death has taken place of Brendan Joseph McColgan, 25 Lockview, Bunkrana. Funeral arrangements are to be confirmed later. The death has occurred of Michael Mickey McColgan, Molinahi Karnamoil Muff, reposing at his home today from 12 noon, where you're welcome to pay your respects. Removal from his home on Saturday afternoon at quarter past one to St. Patrick's Church Ishkahin for Requiem Mass at 2pm, followed by interment in the adjoining graveyard. Michael's Requiem Mass can be viewed on MCN Media. Family time, please, from 11pm to 11am. Family flowers only, please. Donations in lieu if desired to the Donegal Hospice, care of any family member or Sean Murphy Funeral Director. The death has taken place of Godfrey O'Donnell, Main Street, Ardra. His remains will repose at Shovelin's Funeral Home, Sandfield, this evening from 6pm until 8pm. Funeral from there tomorrow morning to the cemetery at the Church of the Holy Family, Ardra, for burial at 11am in the family plot. The death has taken place of AJ Doyle in Perth, Australia. AJ will be reposing at his father Jason's home in Drumminer, Bunkrana from 12pm today where everyone is welcome to come and pay their respects. Funeral leaving from there on Saturday morning at quarter to 11, travelling via Clombeg to Christchurch, Bunkrana for 12pm service with burial in the adjoining graveyard. Family flowers only. Donations in lieu if desired to the Kevin Bell Repatriation Trust, care of any family member or porter funeral directors. The death has took place on Monday the 8th of April in Hitchin, England of Grace MacDonald Tam, Ní Gallagher, formerly of Cross Connell Clonmany and 29 Ard Colmkill Letter Kenny. Funeral will take place on Wednesday the 8th of May at 11am in Our Lady's Catholic Church Hitchin followed by interment in St John's Cemetery. Funeral Mass can be viewed live on the parish Facebook page. The death has occurred of Annie O'Donnell, Caro Naganona Milford and Cash Linan Kilmacrennan. Annie's remains will be received into St Bridget's Church Golan Milford this evening at half past seven to repose overnight. Funeral Mass at 12 noon tomorrow followed by interment in Milford Cemetery, family flowers only. The death has occurred of Desmond Doherty, Susie Pound Street, Carndonna, and late of St. Colin Kill Village, Clonmany. Reposing at the family home in Pound Street, Carndonna, where you're welcome to pay your respects.
Removal from there on Friday morning at half past ten to the Church of the Sacred Heart Carndona for Requiem Mass at 11am, followed by interment in the adjoining graveyard. Requiem Mass can be viewed on carndonaparish.com. Family time please from 11pm tonight. Family flowers only please. Donations in lieu if desire to St. Colm Kill Village Clum Money, care of any family member or Sean Murphy Funeral Director. The death has taken place of Teresa Callaghan, Cole Hill, Newton Cunningham. Teresa's remains are reposing at her late residence today from 12 noon until 11pm with rosary tonight at 9 o'clock. Funeral from there tomorrow morning at half past ten, going to All Saints Church, Newton Cunningham for 11 a.m. Requiem Mass, which can be viewed on churchservices.tv. Interment afterwards in the adjoining graveyard. Family time on the morning of the funeral, please. Family flowers only, please. Donations in lieu of flowers to All Saints Church Chapel Fund and the Donegal Hospice. For family information and more details regarding wakes and funerals, please go to highlandradio.com. Ready to feast your ears on the sizzle of success? Ireland's most awarded, specially selected steak range from Aldi. 100% Irish board be a quality assured. Strip loin for two for just $9.99. Or how about dry aged black Angus ribeye? The best ribeye in Ireland. Two for just $13.99. Sounds good. Tastes even better. Go all Aldi. While stocks last. You're very welcome back to the 9 till noon show here in Highland Radio. Good morning if you're just after uh, joining us. It was another interesting hour to get things underway for today. Um, we appreciate your calls and comments coming into the show as well. Uh, this listener says uh, it's very expensive and there's a lot of red tape to put a taxi on the road in rural areas after COVID between older people not leaving their homes to young people moving abroad and going to college. Business, pubs, cafes closing, customers dropping off dramatically. On top of that, the local links came into areas which did not help. Lots of rural taxi drivers saying the same thing. And very interested, of course, to speak to uh, a member of the taxi driving community. Another caller says you cannot put a taxi on the road unless it's wheelchair accessible. And the back roads in Donegal, where most people live, are dreadful for ordinary cars, never mind um, WAV vehicles. Uh, just a couple of announcements here. Thanks so much for your recent media coverage highlighting the crisis facing our playgroup due to defective blocks. Uh, this is the RCP. We hope to keep our struggle to avail of funding in the spotlight and to this end have arranged a unique event at the playgroup this Sunday the 21st of April at 1pm. All past pupils and their families dating back to 1982 are invited to have a large group picture taken by drone. Families will be invited to see hundreds of past photos and view the premises. At 3pm, a charity football tournament has been organised by Rafo Town Football Club at Drum Drumanuni Rafo to raise funds for the play group. So this is the Rafo uh, Community Play Group. Um, so if you are uh, have attended or have any involvement since 1982, you can get along on Sunday the 21st at 1pm and be part of a huge photograph, uh, which will actually really, in a very visual way, highlight the importance of these facilities. Hi, could you please announce that St Ninian's Hall Convoy are having a jumble and variety sale on Saturday. It's from 11am to 3pm. Refreshments will be served. Tables supplied, €15. Euro. Everyone welcome. Um, hi, Greg, could you give a big shout out to all at Fintown Harps who are running a massive country concert this Saturday night in Fintown Hall. Loads of top artists all backed by the Cufflinks Band. OK, sounds fantastic. Lots going on this weekend. Bit of a buzz. Uh, thank you for having us on your programme last week, Greg. We sold out almost all of the tickets overnight. Would it be possible to mention that additional seats have been added to cope with the demand at some stage this week? Of course, this is the Below the Belt screening. It was uh, a documentary that has been made about endometriosis. And uh, there is uh, that's uh, airing on uh, Monday the 29th of April from 930 
1930, I beg your pardon, at Century, uh, that's 7.30, at Century Cinema's Letter Kenny. Um, so we have a link there. We can tell you about that if you give us a ring. If you thought you'd missed out and tickets, more have been made available. We spoke to young students from Skullmora Bonkrana and they had this fantastic idea. It's part of uh, a programme that they're putting together where they're sending leaflets out to uh, schools across the region uh, talking about alcohol and how it can affect you and what have you. But they also produced, uh, and hope the launch went really well for them, they've also produced beer mats uh, which uh, you can have a QR code on them and you can scan the QR code and it gives you a list of local taxis and this was local to their area. And it is a good idea, but it kind of ties in uh, with what we've been talking about today to some extent as well. And this doesn't take away from the brilliance of the idea. Uh, but this text just says, brilliant idea that the Bonkrana secondary school students had. Pity the regulator seems to be making it almost impossible to get a taxi or hackney licence. So the two issues kind of... Um merge at some point there in the Zen diagram. A caller says, I got three penalty points um, about three quarters of a year ago, but I paid for them. I was told that if they were paid, they'd be taken off. My insurance company informed me that the RSA never took them off. Why was this? I've never heard of being able to pay off penalty points. Uh, I won't mention the insurance company involved here just until such time as we clarify that. Uh, but have you ever heard of this before? Maybe you're paying the insurance company um, to allow for them, if, if that's how you would describe it. The RSA, I've never heard of penalty points that you could pay to take them off. So unless you can maybe text in with a little bit more detail, that might help us pursue that for you. Are you allowed to burn turf in Donegal? It isn't clear whether or not you can. Well, you can, can't you? I don't think the... Uh, or maybe the smoky fuel ban... Um, I don't know. I don't live in Letterkenny. Can you burn turf? Is that smoky fuel? Can you burn turf in Letterkenny? Caroline, can you burn turf in Letterkenny? As part of this fuel, but you can't burn turf in Letterkenny, no? What? Smokeless turf, Caroline? Where are you going to get smokeless turf now, dear? Right, okay, this smoke. <laughs> uh, not, in, not in the areas where you have to burn smokeless fuel, but elsewhere, yeah, you can, because people do, and you can still cut it as well. Uh, Greg, I had a near-death experience on a back road two weeks ago. I rang the RSA and was told that they only deal with vehicles and that the road markings is not their problem. OK, so you were talking about... I, I get you. So you had a near-death experience on a back road. You rang up the RSA to talk about linings and what have you. They said, that's not our issue. We only deal with cars. All right, OK, that's not fantastic. I think they might need to widen the remit if that's the case. Uh, good morning to Annie, Kathy, Dolores, Glenda, Audrey, Beth, Rosemary, uh, all watching the show, uh, amongst the hundreds, watching the show across our various social medias. Just to remind you, before we take a break, you can watch the show, most of the guests on your big screen, TV if you're at home or your Fire Stick uh, YouTube app Highland Radio Ireland type us in like and subscribe please it's very much appreciated we're also on Facebook Highland Hub Highland News and Sport and on the X platform at Highland Radio it's time for Vision Ireland Bingo on Highland Radio. It's Thursday the 18th of April, Jackpot Day. You're playing for the Jackpot Prize of €10,200 on the pink sheet. The reference number is S19, it's game number 16. The Jackpot number is 6. This number can come out in any position from the next 10 numbers drawn. And now, here are your daily numbers. 24 30 18 82 84 79 87 52 31 and finally 81 Phone your claim to 91048 before 8 tonight, leaving your name, contact number and the name of the shop where you purchased your book and we'll call you back the next working day. Get all your Vision Ireland bingo information at highlandradio.com. Experience total relaxation in the spa at Orchids at the Holyrood Hotel Bondoran. Recently awarded Best Hotel Spa Getaway at the RSVP Spa Awards. Enjoy luxury spa baths, revitalizing facials, rejuvenating massages, pampering body treatments, outdoor hot tub and tranquil Japanese garden. Visit on a luxury spa day, pop in for some me time or buy the perfect present with a gift voucher. Relax and let the spa at Orchids transport you to another world. See HolyroodHotel.com. 
House to home, Bridge End, Donegal. Our modest front door opens onto two floors of Irish made furniture, suites, beds, mattresses, dining, and occasional furniture. Step into our showroom and see how we can transform your house into a home. House to home furniture, flooring, slide robes, and interiors, Bridge End, Donegal. Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. Walk the line with the award-winning Johnny Cash and Jim Carter tribute show, Cash Returns, live at the Struel Arts Centre, OMA, on Saturday, 20th of April, and at the Baller Arts Theatre Bally Buffet on Saturday, 4th of May. Limited tickets on sale now at both box offices. That's Cash Returns at the Struel Arts Centre, OMA, on Saturday, 20th of April, and at the Baller Arts Theatre Bally Buffet on Saturday, 4th of May. The 9 till noon show with Letterkenny Credit Union. Now offering mortgages from 40,000 to 600,000 euro with no hidden fees or transaction charges. Letterkenny Credit Union, 9102127. Okay, you're very welcome back to the 9 till noon show here on Highland Radio. Just to remind you of our contact, uh, contact details, 0866025000, 0866025000, or give us a call on 07491 Two guests in studio with us now, Dr. Martin Gormley, Director of Schools with the Donegal ETB. Good morning to you. Good morning, Greg. And um, we also have uh, Eamon Ryan, Ethos Coordinator with Donegal ETB. Thanks for joining us, Eamon. Hello, Greg. It's really good to have you on the show. Shall we just outline the role of the Donegal ETB, I wonder, uh, Martin? Well, the Donegal ETB has a, a, a wide role within the county. For example, we would have 15 post-primary schools which directly come under our management. Uh, we'd also have a huge uh, further education and training service. We also have a Garden Outdoor Education Centre. We have a music education partnership. We're also involved in the youth services. We're also involved in drugs and alcohol training and education. So it's a very, very wide role and remit uh, that we would have right across the county. But it's primarily in and further education and training and education with post-primary students. Now, you've been with the ETB, Donegal ETB, since the late 80s. Yeah, yeah, I joined uh, Donegal ETB actually in 1987. Uh, I was a teacher at the time down in what was uh, Milford Vocational School, uh, now called Mulroy College. Yeah, indeed. And um, there's 15 ETB schools at the moment in the county. Is that, has that always been the case? Uh, well, we've had a, a number of developments. There's 27 post-primary schools in the county. Mm -hmm. 15 of them are, uh, come under the direct remit of the ETB, formerly the VEC. Uh, we've had a number that we've added over the years. For example, uh, Garms called Victor, uh, Victor on Ardmore Island. We also have our school in Torrey. Also, Colossi Kinalone. Uh, Mayenne College, Bundorn. They were all recent ones that would have came into our uh, management since uh, 1987, since I joined. And when I joined Donegal ETB, we, we would have had 11 schools we now 14 or 15 rather yeah and what is the sort of do do schools seek to join the etb or uh, or, or other schools just to be under different sort of management structures what how does that work i know it's a really simple question but answer it to me like i'm five yeah yeah it's probably a legacy thing there's a tradition there there's a number of different types of management bodies that look or look after post-primary schools here in ireland there's the etb as we've mentioned there there's then community and comprehensive schools which would be an, uh, also a number of those in the county and of course then the joint management board would have four schools then like uh, St Eunan's, Letterkenny, uh, the, the convent in Letterkenny, Skullwara in Bonkrana and St Columbus there in Stranorler so that, that's sort of the kind of variety of management bodies that look after. And what is the benefit of schools being sort of part of the Donegal ETB umbrella? Well it, there's great support for our schools for, for example say in our administrative office in Letterkenny we would have a HR department we have a buildings estates management, we have a finance department, we have a corporate service there, we have IT support. So all our 15 schools are able to sort of, uh, you know, look for support there, get support. And there's also tremendous networking amongst our principals, our deputy principals, our, our, our teachers. And, uh, you know, we can form communities of practice very easily to support one another professionally. And that, uh, that has worked uh, tremendously well in terms of uh, improving the quality of teaching and learning in the classroom. Uh, Eamon Ryan, as I mentioned, uh, is with us as well, Ethos Coordinator with Donegal ETB. So can you sort of define your role under that title? Yeah, um, every school in the country is under a certain patronage. So the, the schools that are under the patronage of an ETB, they have a particular ethos. So right across the country in each ETB, there is an ethos coordinator 
and the job of the ethos coordinator is to support schools in looking at their ethos, looking at their policies and practice and making sure that those policies and practice are aligned with the ETB ethos. Yeah, and, and are these sort <clears throat> of... Do they have to? Is there a, a sort of a, a a diktat from the Department of Education that you, it, you your role is also to, as best as possible, ensure that you align with their directives, or, or how how does that structure work? And um, that would happen anyway, and that would happen for all schools in the country, regardless of the patronage. So my role is particularly around that ethos piece. Another word for ethos is maybe the characteristic spirit of the mm. school, and making sure that the schools are. Uh, that they're providing excellence in education, that's excellence in teaching, learning and assessment, that they're schools that are caring, respectful, equality-based, and there's a sense of community in the schools. Those are the core values that underline the ethos of an ETB school. And, and how then is that, um, I suppose, how is that informed and how is that implemented? Well, Martin mentioned just a moment ago about the whole concept of communities of practice. So what happens is I support the schools in Donegal and there is one person in each school is the ethos lead person in that school. So I meet with those ethos leads on a regular basis and we share good practice across our schools. But as well as that, I'm part of a wider community of practice of other ethos coordinators around the country. So I'm looking at what's happening in other ETBs right from the southwest right up to where we are, the northwest, Dublin and so on, and looking for good practice and sharing that good practice across all of the ETB schools. And I, I presume then, <clears throat> you know, it's to ensure as best as possible that the, the teacher's experience, the student's experience is... Uh, you know, maximise that it's as best it can be. So in other words, if you've got one school that's doing everything really, really well, the expectation would be that all students and teachers in the other schools could expect that same. Absolutely. That's, I mean, that's, that's what we're looking for, is that consistency of approach across all of our schools. And we're aiming to have our schools to be the best schools possible. Every parent wants their child to go to a school that is a good school. So we want our schools to be as good as they possibly can be in teaching, in learning, in assessment. And but you school, also don't want to remove their individuality absolutely. either, do you? Because there's a an ethos almost within an ethos. It could be language, it could be music, it could be sport, sport yeah. whatever it might be. Absolutely. That's a great point, you know. So while we want to raise standards across the board, we absolutely recognise the individuality of schools who serve their communities and meet the needs of their communities. And as you say, it could be that they have a particular strength in Irish language or in music or in sport or in uh, music performance, that type of thing. And that's certainly to be encouraged. What schools will do is they'll express that through their mission and their vision statements and then their policies will flow from that. But at the same time, we're looking for them to have that consistency of approach where all standards are raised. Some listening, just such as the nature of the world we live in now, might see, see the word ethos and, and equate it to the word woke. Mm. It's funny, uh, that word ethos, I mean, the ETB sector struggled with that. Um, if we go back to 1998, the Education Act, that's the legislation that underpins everything that happens in schools. And they used the word characteristic spirit, you know, and then um, the ETBs decided on the word ethos. Some, If you ask people what did what's meant by ethos, a lot of people might think, well, it has something to do with maybe religion. Uh, they, they, they make that kind of connection. The way I look at ethos is ethos is how we live together, how we work together mm. and how we relate to each other. The way I would say, to be honest, it was a healthy school environment. Absolutely. absolutely. You know, uh, and, 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 and a safe school environment where, you know, children and staff feel safe physically, but where they also feel safe emotionally and they feel that their needs are being met. Those are important aspects of every school. Okay, um, that's the sort of the school uh, element mm. as, as well. Of course, there is uh, uh, more strings to the ETB, uh, ETB bow. You can put your headphones on there because we're going to uh, talk to uh, another guest here now who's joining us remotely, and that is uh, Valerie um, Yaller, uh, Valerie Yagov. Yugovchuk, is that correct? I'm, I'm I'm trying and learning all the time, uh, Valerie. I really am. I hope I've I've I think I've got Valerie right. Valerie Yugovchuk. Yes. Yeah, okay. Right. Good thank, morning. Thank you very much indeed. Right now, um, you recently came uh, from Ukraine. Uh, what was your, yes. uh, your your 
you know, what did you bring a, a profession with you or an area expect uh, uh, of expertise from Ukraine, uh, Valerie? Uh, by profession, I am a doctor. I'm an anesthetist, uh, and uh, usually I administered uh, anesthetic in uh, surgery uh, theaters. Uh, but in order to work as a doctor uh, here in Ireland, I have to pass uh, some exams. Uh, first of all, English exam, and then two more medical exams. Uh, it can take about maybe two years. Uh, that's why I'm I'm learning English, and uh, at that moment I I didn't have uh, any job, and uh, uh, I found uh, this course, ATB course, uh, and I always was interested in, uh, in accountancy and uh, math, and uh, it was uh, uh, interesting for me. That's why I I chose this course, uh, and. Uh, I, I'm happy with uh, to to have this uh, course done now, and uh, it it was very useful for me. Now you, uh, thanks to your training work uh, as uh, in administration with the government body, but we've lost you to the. Have we lost you uh, from the world of medicine? Uh, we need to, we, we we probably need also your anaesthetist uh, expertise, uh, Valerie. Yes, I know, I know, but. Uh, Ireland has uh, such rules for uh, doctors from uh, non-EU countries. Uh, That's why uh, I'm preparing for my exams now, and uh, I'm happy to have this job at, at this stage. Uh, and uh, I, I'm very sa- uh, thankful for uh, this opportunity for it to be. Yeah, because, of course, you have to keep bread on the table, as they say. Uh, you're here with your uh, family. Your, your children are in school. Your youngest daughter actually uh, attends an Irish language school. Yes, that's right. Uh, I'm here with my family. My wife is working as well uh, in uh, the co-op store now. And uh, my son... Uh, <clears throat> is uh, studying in Rose Community School, secondary school, and my daughter uh, is studying in a national school in Anagri, and uh, I'm very proud of her because uh, she speaks uh, now English and Irish as well. I was very surprised, and uh, we are very happy. Yeah, well, our young ones are like sponges, aren't they? They they soak yes, up so much, definitely. so much yeah. information, uh, and it's a it's it's a it's a it's it's a great uh, string for her bow later in her life as well. So, whilst uh, thanks to this uh, retraining, uh, you are able to to get employment in administration, still working uh, towards uh, practicing medicine, I, I presume, and I suppose as well through your work and engaging with other people. All the while, English is improving. Yes, uh, it helps me a lot because uh, I have to speak with uh, customers and with my colleagues and uh, uh, I <clears throat> I'm very helpful for my colleagues as well because uh, they are great help for me and uh, I hope it helps me eventually to get my job in medicine. Okay, well listen, you're happy here anyway and life is good. Yeah. Okay. Right. Excellent stuff. Thank you so very much indeed. And that is and talks to a uh, gentleman, Dr. Martin Gormley and uh, Eamon Ryan, who's with us. Uh, Martin, that talks to uh, the, 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 the benefits beyond what we've already been talking about of the Donegal ETB. Yeah, yeah, I suppose it, like there's a typical example of a family that has come to Ireland and Donegal ETB has been able to respond to their need, for example, there, you know, in terms of adult classes for parents. And that would be through what we call our ESOL program there. So we have an awful lot of, of new people who have come into the country and I suppose we're charged with tr- trying to deliver a, or the English language to them and trying to improve their proficiency in, in English. But it, it's great to hear Valerie there that has settled down in the West Donegal and his kids going to an Irish primary school and stuff like that there. I, mean, even, I think and, he, even he's surprised at how well his yeah, uh, and, daughter's taken to and, the and Irish It, it just shows you, DC. And that's that's what's happening in our schools at the moment. We have, you know, a lot of new kids that have come into to our different schools. And what we have to do then is we're, we're supporting them through what we call an EAL programme, which is English as an additional language. So we're getting some resources to do that. And, uh, you know, schools are much different places. It, that now. is a challenge, though, isn't it? Um, and I don't mean this in any way negative at all but if you 
we're in a unique situation where you get a lot of people coming into a school, right, and, and maybe there is a language barrier there, that you want to accommodate uh, those children and ensure that they reach their full potential. But at the same time, you don't want the, that to have any negative, negative impact on the school experience of children up until then. Because uh, the sort of, you know, you know, two speeds of traffic going there, I, a balance I perhaps wouldn't like to try and strike myself. Yeah, but but, but our t- teachers in our schools are very skilled with our staff, their uh, SNAs and all the support staff we have there in terms of overcoming those types of challenges. We tend to have a very positive approach to it. So when, when a new c- kid comes to the school, if they're from Cro- Croatia or somewhere like that there, we would introduce them as this uh, young boy speaks Croatian and a little bit of English. So we don't sort of maybe try to focus on the fact that, you know, that there are challenges with, mm. the, with the, the language. But once once they get immersed in a school and there's integration and, and you know, teachers and that get, put structures in the classroom themselves to try to include the, those kids there, you can see them improving in leaps and bounds. Well, when you see what humans are capable of, uh, this is surely a nut we can crack. It, it is, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It can't yeah. be beyond us, uh, can it? And the, the other thing about schools is it's great to see diversity in them because that's really a mirror of wider society then. And, you know, the world is so interconnected now. So if we can reflect that in our schools with young people at a very young age, that gives them great skills in terms of going forward into adult life. Yeah, and so who, who, who can talk to the services of Donegal ETB from you or Eamon uh, in terms of, you know, those listening today that are outside the school, they've left school for some time, maybe they're in a, 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 a job they'd like to try something else or pursue uh, or scratch a niche that they've always had. What can the Donegal ETB uh, assist in that regard? Well, we have a further education and training service, and through that we have an adult learner guidance service. So that probably is the, the first point to call for them to contact adult learner guidance service within uh, Donegal ETB. And they, they, we have a number of uh, professionals there who will be able to point them in the right direction then and just get, get them started. And sometimes it's little steps at the start, but a lot can be achieved. Yeah, that's the further education and uh, training. In in terms of, of ethos, as ethos coordinator, Eamon, is it, like, are we in a period of time now where we're trying to get everything right, if you know what I mean, that we're trying to be inclusive, but, but then there are lines that people don't want you to cross? Like, is there any challenges in your work to ensure that the, the school environment is the environment that is reflective of parents' wishes? I think, I mean, the important thing for a parent is that there that there's choice there and a choice of school insofar as possible. And that's one of the things that ETB is trying to do is trying to be as inclusive as possible. But the bottom line for schools is they're trying to be as good as they can be. So they're trying to be um, meet the academic wishes of parents and students, but at the same time recognising that you'll only reach your academic potential if you're in a school where you feel you belong, where you're happy, where you feel cared for and so on. So the two things are interlinked in terms of meeting parents' um, parents' wishes and ambitions and then the students and the happiness of the students in the school environment. Yeah, and children feel safe as well, Absolutely. of course. Um, Martin, staffing, what's the staffing situation across the, the, the 15 Donegal ETB schools? Uh, is that a challenge? Well, it can be a challenge. It depends on particular subjects. Uh, we're probably not as cu- acutely affected as, say, our, 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 our schools in Dublin or in mm. the commuter belt there. In, in Donegal ETB, by and large, we have most of our... Uh, post filled. Sometimes, you know, uh, later in the year, things like a maternity leave can occur there. and We, we may have issues trying to fill posts at the times at short notice like, like that. But uh, by and large, uh, we, we we don't experience the same difficulties around recruitment. Uh, in fact, we'll, we'll be advertising over the coming weeks now around teaching vacancies for the forthcoming year. So we would encourage any of our uh, pe- people out there who's interested in joining Donegal ETB as a teacher to watch out for those adverts. All right, brilliant stuff. Um, it's been really interesting. Anything else that you we didn't touch on, uh, either you, Martin, or Eamon, that might be uh, interesting to our listeners? I, I think I think what you know what you were saying there around schools. The big thing from talking to parents about schools is students need to be safe and they need to be happy and if we can get those two things right the learning comes then quite Mm. easy and it's it's much easier but if if you don't get those things right there and i think too also uh, another thing that parents might say or might text is they want to be heard as well that they feel that the schools are you know dealing with 
any concerns that they might have. Yeah, yeah. well, not alone have parents to be heard, but students have to be heard of also. Course, yeah. And I think that's something that, you know, schools have been working on this last while. They've been promoting student voice. And it's not just student voice through a student council. It's student voice in the actual classroom. For example, teachers now, when they're doing different texts and, and different subjects and that, they talk to students about, you know, giving them a choice, which would they prefer, maybe point out, you know, that what's involved in it. And, and there's little decisions made there which, which are, are very effective and, mm. uh, you know, contribute and recognise students has been very, very important part of school communities. And just, Damon, on the sort of engagement with, with parents and guardians, does, I mean, obviously, presumably, that falls uh, under the, the, the remit of ethos as well, does it? Absolutely. It falls under uh, the, the, the issue of voice and agency and making sure that both students and parents and staff have their voice and have their voice heard and taken into account one of the initiatives that many of our schools are involved in is school self-evaluation and that's a process whereby the school actively seeks out the voice of the parent, of the student, of the staff before making changes to things like policies and practice and it's making sure that that, that voice is mm. at the heart of changes rather than one or two people making a decision. It's a very democratic process yeah. um, and that's you know one of the values or one of the important values of a good ETB school. Yeah, and I suppose too the the challenge is isn't that it, in trying to get everything correct, it has to be done in a way though that can be navigated, can't it? Because if, if this was done wrong, it could just be layer and layer and layer of of things with an aim to make things better, but so convoluted that it would be like walking through a maze to get to, to, to a resolution yeah. or to, to get to a point where a school might want to be in a particular area. That's a brilliant point because, I mean, schools are, the school are, schools are full of human beings, you know, whether it's staff or students, and everything that's decided has to be easily implementable. And then when it is implemented and it happens, it needs to be assessed to see, well, is this doing what we hoped it would do? And if not, we need to be able to make changes. But there's no point, as you say, in layering policies upon policies upon policies if practices don't change and if practices are uh, practices must be implementable. And where would you gauge where we're at and where we need to be? I mean, nothing is complete, but in terms of your 15 schools, how satisfied, where, what would you give them... <laughs> <laughs> what rock grade would you give where we're at? I suppose we want to be at A+. Plus. Well, well, I, I was, it's always a work in progress. Our schools are very progressive yeah. and they've taken on a lot of change and teachers have taken on a lot of change in recent years in schools. And there's more down the line, for example, we're going to see the whole senior cycle redeveloped and the leaving cert being redeveloped. And teachers are getting ready for that. The conversations uh, have happened a number of years ago and they're really now talking about how that's going to work in practice. And we're having those discussions with our principals, with our deputies, our community of practices across the subjects are also talking about that there and, and how it's going to change school lives. School has changed so, so much. Like, I know myself and Eamon would have started, you know, back in 87, around that time there, 86, 87, around that time. And, you know, if you look now at how a school has changed, there's been, you know, so, so many different things that have happened in schools. And it's, it's really for the good. And even if we look at our student population, you know, the fact that there's so much diversity there, you know, there's different cultures there's different people eat different things you know they they behave differently they've interest in different sports their music art all of those things are so important but at the same time you want to recognize we 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 of course want to recognize what makes us uh, different or what is culturally appropriate or whatever it might be but also to the school environment you want to set it up to that that there's there's full integration as well there's full integration and there's uh, you know there's understanding there's tolerance there's an und uh, and that people can see different perspectives and that that's so important if it's geography if it's history we had a very interesting debate around flags with our with our schools there where you know we were talking about flags and flags can be offensive sometimes mm -hmm. to different students depending on wh where they're coming from and you know we had a very good uh, debate around that and we we were sort of concluded then that you know promoting different countries through language through their cuisine that they have through the you know their their geography their history mm. all of that there uh, would make them very very welcome yeah and it's such an important role just to wrap it up i mean like you know we need to hear young voices more as well and i'm on about when i say young i'm on about like 25 down this is their country do you know mm. what i mean mm. with with all due respect to all three of us i think we've spent more time here in the past than we might into the future, oh, yeah. if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if you 
often listen to debate and conversation about various different things, and I'm not saying it shouldn't be had, but, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily talk to or on behalf of the young people. You know, I suppose we have a responsibility to what country we're leaving them, but they, it is their country going forward. Can I All tell right. you, can yes, I tell please, you about course, um, Simon, go a, ahead. an initiative that happened just yesterday? It was in Finn Valley College, uh, College in Stranorla, which is one of the ETB schools, and they hosted uh, a debating competition between eight local primary schools, fifth class students. So the students who were debating were typically about 10 or 11 years old, but the whole debate was organised by and run by the Finn Valley students. And then the Finn Valley students who were aged about 16, they sat with each of the teams, the younger teams, and prepared them for the debate. So they explained to them how to debate and, you know, what points they might make and how to research for the debate. And then when that debate was over, they went away and they prepared for the next debate. And that was a real example of we were promoting the student voice of the 10-year-olds but it was the 16-year-olds who were supporting them, where the adults, the older people, took a step back. Yeah. And it's that type of model of involvement and um, making sure the student voice is at the heart of what we do. What's, clever, powerful... about, what's clever about that too is is uh, whilst the 16-year-olds may think, and they are, mm. uh, assisting and helping the younger students, they themselves are... Oh, they're Learning developing too, themselves. yeah, yeah, and leadership, leadership. Yeah, I think sometimes <laughs> yeah. that's the best yeah. learning, isn't you're it, when you don't really realise yeah. you're learning. You're everybody, on, everybody left the event a little bit taller than when they came into it. Yeah. Well, that's what yeah. it's all about, isn't yeah. it, education? Yeah. Yeah. All right, listen, it's been really interesting. Thanks to Valerie, who joined us a little earlier on, and also Dr Martin Gormley, Director of Schools with the ETB, and also Eamon Ryan, Ethos Coordinator with the ETB. Uh, that was part of Your Voice, Your Community, brought to you uh, by Commissioner Mann. We look at the work of the ETB as we looked at the work of the ETB in education and training. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. The 9 Till Noon Show is brought to you by Letterkenny Credit Union. Offering low-rate car loans with fast approval. Apply online at letterkennycu.ie or in office today. Testing, testing. Do you need to get your hearing tested? Test your hearing with a free sample hearing aid from Hidden Hearing. Order your free sample hearing aid today. Call 1-800-370-000 or visit hiddenhearing.ie. Easy Living Furniture's biggest ever roadshow sale is here. Come discover the amazing roadshow deals such as all sofas reduced, all dining reduced, all bedroom reduced, all mattresses reduced, and with interest-free finance available. This is one sale not to be missed. The spectacular roadshow sale with absolutely everything reduced is now on at Easy Living Furniture, Crescent Link Retail Park, or online at easylivingfurniture.co.uk. When it's time for confirmation or first communion, it's time for a trip to Watson Menswear, Letterkenny. Choose from a great selection of top label, casual and formal wear. Suits with matching shirts and ties, blazers and jackets. Also denims, chinos and footwear from big names like Diesel, 1880 Club and Tommy Bow. Stand out on the big day at Watson Menswear. Open seven days a week on Main Street, Letterkenny and watsonmenswear.com. There's an exciting lineup of events in store at the Villa Rose and Jackson's Hotel's Bully Buffet this spring. From Ireland's top Tina Turner Act to the Whistling Donkeys to the Young Wolf Tones and more. Contact the Villa Rose and Jackson's Hotel's for details. Don't miss the BAFTA award-winning comedian Michael McIntyre's brand new show, Magnificent, at the SSC Arena Belfast on Friday the 31st of May 2024. As always, Highland Radio make it easy for you as we look after all your needs. We will provide luxury transfers, overnight stay at the Clayton Hotel Belfast on a B&B basis, your ticket to the show, shopping time in Belfast City Centre. For more information, go to the outlet at highlandradio.com or give us a call on 074 91 25000. Michael McIntyre in Belfast. The 9 till noon show with Letterkenny Credit Union. Simplify your debts with a debt consolidation loan from Letterkenny Credit Union. Call us on 074-910-2126 or apply online via our app or in office today. Enjoy summer with Home Store and more. Bring your garden to life with our great range of garden furniture, including rattan sets, barbecues, solar lights and much more. Like our Florence Corner set for €649. Euro. Dine in style with the Amelia 7-piece garden set for only €229. Euro. 
Light up your garden with our 10 LED bulb solar lights, only $9.99. Make your garden your sanctuary. Visit in-store or shop online at homestoreandmore.ie. Home Store and More, a happy home. For day-to-day -day healthcare needs, generations have trusted the experienced staff at McGee's Chemist Letterkenny. From coughs and colds to aches and pains, from vitamin supplements to first aid essentials. McGee's have what you need, when you need it, with a full prescription service available daily. McGee's Chemist, Main Street Letterkenny. For healthcare help and advice, you can always trust. FBD doesn't stand for frightening rad dentists. Ferociously beating drums. Or feline business directors. FBD stands for support. We support business owners in Ireland with tailor-made services from personally assigned advisors. Visit your local branch to talk to your FBD insurance team. FBD Insurance. Support. It's what we do. Underwritten by FBD Insurance PLC. FBD Insurance Group Limited. Trading as FBD Insurance is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Country Sundays at the Clanry Hotel at Kenny. This Sunday, 21st, there's Johnny Brady and his band dancing from 9 till 11. Admission, 15 euro pay at the door. Coming attraction Sunday, 28th, there's Claudia Buckley. But this Sunday, don't miss Johnny Brady at the Clanry Hotel at Kenny. Highland Radio Weather Updates brought to you by Michael Hennies. Support a local Donegal business with Michael Hennies. From fashion to home essentials, find everything you need for any occasion. Shop Michael Hennies Valley Buffet for quality you can trust. So mostly dull and damp today without breaks of patchy rain and drizzle at times uh, through the day. Highest temperatures of 8 to 11 degrees and a moderate westerly wind increasing fresh west to northwest and uh, weather is going to get uh, ever more pleasant as we head into Friday uh, and then into Saturday and uh, Sunday. Uh, Brian Kelly is a defective block home owner and he joins us on the programme now. Brian, thanks uh, for your time. Uh, how you doing? How you doing? Uh, when did uh, the the penny drop that, that you were affected by uh, defective materials? Um, as far back as 2016, long before, I suppose, a lot of these groups came online. There was talk, and we had some suspected cracks in the house. All right, so... Uh, we yeah, we go ahead, sorry, Brian. Engineer. Yeah. We contacted an engineer, and he came out and looked, and he tried to convince us we didn't have an issue, that he had seen bad houses, and our house wasn't bad. So gave us a report on a visual inspection, charged us for that report, and three years later, we got the same engineer out in 2000. 19, and he said, oh, maybe it's not time to do a bit of testing. So that was in August 2019. And there was quite a hefty bill associated uh, with that test in 2019. Oh, up, upwards of £6,500 for the, for, the, for the testing for the DCB scheme. And it took uh, from August 2019 until February 2021 to get the reports and engineering reports ready and for submission to the council for a stage one application, which happened in February 2021. Uh, and then you got approval in 2022, you mentioned, for full demolition, is it? Um, the house was initially for, I believe, uh, uh, we got approval in demolition in December 2022. That was 71 weeks ago. As soon as we got approval, um, we realised that our house is a big house, it's th almost 3,400 square feet. There was never going to be enough money to rebuild it in the cap which had been proposed at 420,000. So we were conscious that our kids were almost out of university, that let's build something that the grant will cover. Uh, and that's what we chose to do. So we applied for a a smaller house. We reduced the size to 2,000 square feet. Um, were you accepted? Um, that went through the planning. Uh, the first thing we hit a hiccup where the housing department asked us for an archaeological dig on the site. Uh, it involved a lot of lobbying to get over that. Um, as of today, I don't know if that's been accepted. Uh, we haven't had a grant award. We've been told we can have a demolition. We've been told the planning has been passed for a new house. But um, 18 weeks into our stage two application, which is supposed to four and a half months, we don't know what grant they're going to give us. 
because this sounds to me like what was being sought as part of this new scheme, penalty-free downsizing, but that wasn't approved. But you still believe that you can apply for a grant to replace the bigger house with a smaller house, or are you unsure about that at this point? Oh, no, I, I, uh, what, I what I believe is I, I breached the cap once my house went over 3,400 square feet. There is no opportunity for me to rebuild that. I'm working with my architect. He believes he can get a 2,100 square foot house passed. Mm-hmm. So, but I don't know what what grant will come with that. I don't know. Yeah, 165 weeks uh, since you applied for stage one. Uh, it's 18 yeah. weeks now since you applied for stage two, and still you haven't a clue as to uh, what's next for you, really. Well, that's, that's there's more than the 18 weeks. That that 18 weeks includes my my wife rings the council twice a week. Uh, it's never a five minute call. She's always on the phone for over half an hour to three quarters of an hour. By the time she gets through to people, she's on first name basis with most of the guys in there. They say it's with the technical department. Uh, no date when it's going to complete. It seems if it takes four and a half months. To get this rubber stamp to go to the next stage, then how long is the whole process going to get? We're not sure how long that's going to take. Um, talking to other people who applied in the same time frame, they found out in January what their grant allocation would be. So effectively, they're three and a half months further down the road than we are. But you're in limbo, really, at this point. In limbo. Yeah. In limbo, well, targetry, I call it limbo. Whichever, Targetry, no, 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 you might no, no want to describe it as well. Yeah. No, no word coming back when we're actually going to get this grant award. That is only the current obstacle. We have found obstacles the whole way through this process, all of which require further information, all of which require getting back to people, eyes dotted and T's crossed. We honestly believe we've been on top of it. And I, I only feel for those that probably haven't, I call it the ducks in a row, that their life is going to be almost impossible. But even as we try to do everything by the book, I currently have paid out, oh, I suppose, three and a half thousand euro to an architect. I don't get that money back uh, until at some stage I get into my build and get a claim. No, and I have more. To, I, have an in, I have an invoice pending too, but. A thousand, a thousand euros is not that easy to put your hands on these days. No, it certainly is not. Uh, this house is unlivable at the moment. Chimney ready to fall off, plaster is, yeah. off, yeah. black mould inside, sick uh, children as a result. Uh, you have to move out, I, I take it, and I think that date is, is looming, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that, that date is in the next uh, two weeks. Um, my children have already left the house. My Both of them are university students. They came back to live with us. One of them developed a cough. There has been black mould in his room for almost a year and a half. We have tried our best to keep it back. We just took a decision that we have to move out and we have a property now in Derry. We can't get anything in the in the locality and he has moved into that. Uh, my daughter's a medical student. She's away from home most of the time, but when she comes back, she will be living in Derry as well. And I have shut down the sky, so I have no TV in two weeks' time and I will be moving out too. Uh, you I do work... have a problem. I do. I do have a problem where I'm going to put my dogs. Yeah, I have two little Jack Russells. I don't know where to house them. Uh, you work in project management, so you, you know how this yep. stuff works, uh, and you you obviously also know how the scheme is working in terms of engagement and information being sought, and that archaeological uh, report being sought on a house that's 17 years old. I, I understand, I'm not saying it's the case, but I can understand how you might feel that the scheme feels like it's being designed to frustrate you in actually replacing this house. That's exactly what it seems to me, Greg. You took the words out of my mouth. I, The more I look at this scheme, it seems like it's intentionally attempted to stifle people every way through the process. Uh, how I can be three years through a four-step application process is beyond me. I do understand that the stage one was mixed up with the transition from the 9010 scheme to the new enhanced scheme to wherever the scheme is going next. But when you are only allowed to contact someone for an update status two days a week and are then put in a queue, that's, that's not right. Nobody is answerable. The book stops nowhere. We've no one to nowhere to ring to find out what the real what the real answer is. When is the completion date? 
something without a completion date never ends. Can um, I ask if you don't mind too, uh, yeah. in terms of the accommodation grant, uh, have you been okayed for that even though the, you will be living no, in a different I jurisdiction? Haven't, I, haven't even, I, I haven't made an application for an accommodation grant. Mm. I am trying to use as much money as is in that 420000 If that's what I get allocated minus engineer fees to rebuild my house, yes. I will pay mortgage and rent up to that time. I haven't asked for an application grant because I see that as more paperwork and more stifling work. Uh, luckily, I suppose I can just about to afford to do that. With two children in college, that's not easy. Uh, something has to give. I mean, you're right enough some amount of positive equity, whatever comes of this uh you know in terms of our worth as you know we pay off our mortgage and whatever we have is what we're worth i mean if you are approved for a smaller house which i, I didn't really realize the scheme uh, uh, allowed for which is uh, uh, an education i, I think the, the downsizing was if someone had a 2000 square foot house which was fully covered could they get the grant for a 2000 square foot house and build a 1500 square foot house and use that equity to try and finish Understood. it I, I think that's what the downsizing clause was Understood. relating I to. You. That makes sense. I, I, fall, I fall outside that. I believe today that anybody with a, a house over 2,000 square foot will fall into a, a shortfall that the cap will not build a house mm. bigger than 2,000 square foot. Uh, so you really have no choice unless you, you want to put your hand in your pocket. I did some stats on the numbers which were available to me on the web, on the council webpage, etc., 60% of houses in Donegal are over 2,000 square foot. So that's 60% of houses where people will have to put their hand in their own pocket to get a like-for-like -like house back. Some might be able to. I definitely couldn't. How that can be 100% redress for 100% of the population is beyond me. It, the stats just don't add up. Yeah, but if it you will point, cover if you, if you point, maybe smaller houses. Yeah, but if you point that out, you know, you're accused of being all manner of things. Yet the the, the statistics are there to show that for the majority of people, this isn't 100% redress. But as I say, you almost get metaphorically shot for were, saying so. If people were truthful with themselves and really sat back and examined this and examined what has been spun, it, it, it is a lie. It is a big lie, in my opinion. Uh, I won't. I, I, I have great, great respect for the action groups and the people who brought me to Dublin twice and who have two schemes on the table. I don't believe they would be there if that work wasn't done. Uh, I have really great respect for these people. Don't share your concerns as it relates to those I just believe things. they're being tossed aside now, though. OK, listen, Brian, it is just 11 o'clock, uh, so I have to go. Thank you very much for your time. I hope things get resolved for you and your family as soon as is possible and uh, it, it comes up uh, to a situation that's some way uh, manageable. <laughs> With all the stories that matter across the Northwest, it's Greg Hughes on the 9 to Noon Show on Highland Radio. OK, it's just turned 11 o'clock. Time for a news update and it's over to Donna Marie Doherty. Thanks, Greg. Good morning. Northwest candidate for the upcoming European elections, Kieran Mullooly, is visiting Kelly Beggs today to discuss the ongoing quotas issues faced by the fishing industry. He says there's a void in representation at a European level for the fishing sector, and that he hopes if he's elected, it's a role he can fulfil alongside a new Irish government. When asked if he believes anything can be done by the newly elected MEPs before the general election, which is due to take place next year, Mr Mullooly responded by saying the gap between the two will be shorter than anticipated. Today marks the fifth anniversary of Lyra McKee's death in Derry. The 29-year-old journalist was killed while observing a riot in the city in 2019. Three men have since been charged with her murder, with seven others charged in connection with other offences. Letter Kenny Rhodes Policing Unit are appealing to road users to make responsible decisions after making two arrests in the early hours of this morning. The first driver was caught travelling at 156 kilometres per hour in a 100 zone. A second motorist, who test positive for cocaine and cannabis, was also arrested. Gardaí are reminding the public that making the decision to drive while under the influence of drugs or alcohol can have devastating consequences. Families will now be able to record stillbirths on a public register. The public register of stillbirths is set to be introduced by the Social Protection Minister and will remain private unless parents choose to make the information public. Under a new bill, families can also register the birth or death of a loved one online for the first time. Minister Heather Humphreys says these changes are being introduced to bring Ireland in line with the practices in place of other countries. 
The Regional Traveller Health Action Plan was launched in Ballyshannon this week. The aim of the five-year implementation plan is to work together to improve the health experiences and outcomes for travellers. A spokesperson says that while there are ambitious actions within the plan, it highlights a real desire for meaningful change and inclusive collaboration. And finally, Donegal Spirits will soon be available in America. The Muff Liquor Company based in Enishon has signed an exclusive distribution agreement for US market with the Lucas Bowls Company. It means the Lucas Bowls Company has exclusive rights to import and distribute Muff Liquor products in the United States of America. The US company is among top leaders in the global cocktail market. That's all for now. We'll be back again at 12 o'clock. That's right, Donna Marie. 12 <laughs> o'clock. Well done. All right, she had to glance over her shoulder to check the time. All right, Donna Marie, thank you very much indeed for that. Uh, loads to come in the next hour of the 9 till noon show please stay right where you are we are going to take a break the 9 till noon show is brought to you by Letterkenny Credit Union digital loans now available apply online or via our app today and get your loan transferred directly to your current account Virgin Media is bringing Ireland's best broadband to more and more homes. Big homes, little homes, outhouses, haunted houses, big gaffs in the country, non-bouncy castles, number 16, Oxbow Lake Houses, the house with all the cats. Get two gig full fibre broadband with 99.9% reliability from Virgin Media. It's playtime. T's and C's apply. See virginmedia.ie. Subject to availability. Ireland's best broadband. See virginmedia.ie forward slash proof. All you need to make your house a home at Patterson's The Hall Lifford. From garden furniture to kitchens, sofas and dining sets, all under one roof. Need a new mattress? Why not visit our sleep centre on the first floor? With a large range of quality beds and mattresses in stock and ready for collection or delivery. Relax in our coffee shop serving hot lunches daily. Open Monday to Saturday, 9am to 5.30pm. Patterson's Kitchens and Interiors, The Hall Lifford. As soon as we mention the following from Aldi, you probably won't be able to concentrate on anything else. So, I hope you're not doing dental work. Cottage pie made with board be a quality assured Irish organic lean round steak mince 5% fat was 4.99 now 3.99. One of our super 6 fresh meat offers this week. Buy all 6 and save even more. Follow the path to lower prices. Go all Aldi. See in store or online for offers, terms and conditions while stocks last. Are you ready for Cairn Community Games? Come and make some noise. Throw shapes, run, paint, cycle, sing. Take to the stage and make friends. It doesn't matter where you're from or what you're into. There's a place for you at Cairn Community Games. Because together, we're all in. Play your part at cairncommunitygames.ie. Charlie McClafferty Funeral Directors. Serving Letter Kenny and the surrounding areas for over 100 years. Charlie McClafferty Funeral Directors. Let our family take care of your family and guide you through a difficult time. The infection felt terrible. I just wasn't getting better. I was breathing fast and I felt confused. I had shivers and pain through my body. I was drinking water, but I wasn't Sepsis. peeing. I felt like I was going to die. In the hospital, they said I had sepsis. sepsis. And it's urgent. Sepsis can hide behind any infection at any age, so watch out for the signs. Visit hse.ie forward slash sepsis for more information. And don't be afraid to ask the question, could it be sepsis? From the HSC. Now we're joined on the programme by uh, the Green Party Senator Pauline O'Reilly. Good morning to you, Pauline. Thanks for your time. Good morning, Greg. Right, you uh, recently raised the issue of a hair loss therapy for uh, cancer patients that, uh, as far as I'm aware, uh, and I think you are outlined, is not available in um, Letter Kenny. So, could you give us the uh, could you give us the details of of the issue that you raised? Sure. Yeah. Well. There's about half of the hospitals in Ireland provide this service, but actually it's on the HSE website that you should be able to get it. And it was it was brought to my attention that many, many of those, and I suppose particularly women going through um, cancer treatment um, weren't getting access to it. So as we know, in some cancer treatments, hair loss is one of the side effects. And um, there is a device that you can put on a, a patient's head and it basically um, makes the scalp cold and it prevents, in many instances, it prevents hair loss. Now, it, it doesn't work 
every time and it's really a matter for the oncologist the conversation with with the person going through the treatment but it works in a lot of cases and um so i raised the matter i did a motion in the shannon um and brought in the minister for health and uh, really i suppose tried to persuade him of the merits of it and um, he gave well i think it's uh, yeah, i think too and we'll yes, get on to that i think it's important that that all people have equal access to whatever therapies or treatments are available including uh, hypothermia it's great that it's uh, provided in seven hospitals currently but everyone and and, and you know pauline i, I think it's it, it's a given that for a lot of uh, people for a lot of women um hair loss through chemotherapy uh, can compound obviously what's already a difficult situation. It can be a very difficult part of that uh, healing process. Absolutely. And I mean, some studies would even show that people in some cases decide not to go ahead with treatment because of the um, the devastating, I suppose, emotional side that is that, that visible hair loss. It impacts on other people as well in the family young children seeing perhaps their mother losing their hair and it's not necessary um but as you say i mean it's it's this shocking i suppose state of affairs where you have some hospitals that have it and others that don't and i have people contact me since i've raised the issue people contacting me to see how they can get it in parts of the country in galway neither of the hospitals have it in letter kenny again the same nace um and in um, in Dundalk, and then many some others do have it. So mm -hmm. it's it's deeply unfair a situation. Okay, so after you raised it, you mentioned you received contact then from the health minister Stephen Donnelly. Uh, what had he got to say? Yeah, so he said he thanked me for raising it initially last year and said he had never heard of it. Um, and I I suppose I I laid out what the costs would be, and they're relatively. Uh, minor costs and last night then he gave me a call and he said great news um, thanks for raising it and he's going to um, fund it for every hospital in the country so every hospital will be offered it and those hospitals that might want more will also be offered more yeah and um, just to be clear it's news? it's not necessarily a silver bullet it it does work uh, it, no. it has been proven to work of course uh, but it it, it depends on sometimes the type of uh, treatment that people get. But one of the most common cancers, of course, is uh, breast cancer. And it is quite uh, effective, is it? Uh, particularly it, for the chemotherapy that would be given to people undergoing treatment for breast cancer. It, it is. And I've met women who have undergone treatment. And um, um, one woman in particular, and once she was offered the, the cold cap and once she wasn't, and she said it was like night and day, her experience mm. of going through treatment. So, yes, it is effective, not in every case, but um, it's it's worth a conversation with your oncologist to see if it's going to suit your particular type of treatment. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, you will, of course, uh, chase this up uh, to ensure the money is available, as promised, but also to where it is offered to hospitals, what happens there as well? Because, you, you know, we have to, and we will as well, you have to, we have to be sure, don't we, that if a hospital is offered this, that they take up this uh, offer, that it doesn't get lost in paperwork or what have you, that the people seeking treatment in our local hospital and in Galway, of course, uh, many people from here go down to Galway, uh, that uh, the hospitals actually do accept these offers. Yeah, well, I mean, the minister has spoken to the hospitals and some are saying that they will avail of it and some are yet to be persuaded. I suppose uh, the minister's feeling and, and mine as well would be that once it starts to be rolled out, people can see how um, how easy it is to manage. And indeed, like it's a very easy a process it's not even a procedure wouldn't be the correct no, word yeah, yeah. you just attach it to, to a person's head and and they do the rest you know so i i'm hopeful i mean if some hospitals can do it there's no reasons why others can't do it yeah. and it is about that equality of access as you said at the start there. indeed thanks pauline i appreciate your time that is uh, senator pauline o'reilly of the green party we're going to put an inquiry into uh letter Kenning university hospital to see if they are open to uh, accepting the offer of funding to provide this. Very interested too, if any of you out there listening, and it, 
obviously it depends on the person because we're talking about you, you know what some people might seem as very private but if any of you perhaps did go through uh, cancer treatment and did have the cold cap it seems quite simple really in that um, it's a cap one puts on the head and it cools the blood in the head uh, and that for, for for many people but not for all and dependent on the, the type of chemotherapy and what have you that that can uh, reduce uh, hair loss or minimise hair loss if you've had experience of that and it worked for you uh, it really would be useful to speak to you and obviously maybe even then strengthen the argument for uh, this to be made available to anyone getting treatment in Letterkenny and Galway as soon as possible The county's number one talk show The Nine Till Noon Show on Highland Radio The Nine Till Noon Show is Brought to you by Letterkenny Credit Union with monster loans available up to €60,000 for all occasions. Visit letterkennycu.ie. Silish costs to remain high this summer. For more in your Irish Farmer's Journal, here's Paul Mooney. We reveal how much it will cost you to make bale silage this year. Flooding at Roscommon's Loch Funchina, the worst in living memory. Dry stock farmers sleepwalking into nitrates penalties. Everything farmers need to know about the new fodder scheme. Minister kills compensation for dairy exit scheme. High court blocks for the work at Donegal Wind Farm. We analyse Lakeland, Arevo and Arabon annual results. And how to register for the upcoming Renewables Roadshow in Cavan. All inside the Irish Farmer's Journal, on sale now. Now. Introducing Super Value's new Real Rewards prices. Scan your card or app and get Kellogg's Cocoa Pops for only two fifty. Was five thirty nine, and Coca Noodles four pack range for two fifty. Was three ninety nine. Don't forget, our amazing lower prices are exclusive to Real Rewards members. So start making real savings at Super Value. Knuckle down, knuckle down, knuckle down. I'm Pat Short. I'm Faye Short. We're performing our new show, Knuckle Down, at Ballard Arts Centre Bally Buffet, Friday, the 19th of April. Tickets available at BallardArtsCentre.com. Skoda's two brand new models are going fast. This is Donal, driving off in his new HVO powered superb combi. And the Breen family, getting their plug in hybrid Kodiak. And this is the sound of someone who didn't get their order in on time. Oh, for order your new Skoda today before it's too late. Skoda. Let's explore. Skoda. Your local Skoda dealer is DMG Motors, Clare Road, Donegal Town. Telephone 074 97 2396. The Northwest Cross Border Jobs Expo will be held on Wednesday, 24th of April from 10 a.m. till 3 p.m. in the Radisson Blue Hotel, Letterkenny. The event provides an opportunity to meet employers, check out their current vacancies, and learn more about what training or education opportunities are on offer. So, whether you're a job seeker, graduate, or employed and wish to change jobs, start a new career, or relocate, then please register your interest on eventbrite.ie. We look forward to seeing you there. This event is supported by the Cross-Border Partnership for Employment Services, the Department of Social Protection and Department for Communities. Are you ready to take the next step in your career journey or are you keen to get back into the local workforce? Then look no further because the Inishowns Job Fair could be just what you are looking for. Uh, Sinead McDay, Team Lead and Enterprise Officer with Inishown Development Partnership. Good morning to you. Good morning, Greg. And we are also joined by Anne McColgan, Employer Management Officer with Inishown Development uh, Partnership. Both of you, thanks so much for calling down. Uh, uh, thank you, Greg, and uh, thank you for uh, giving us the opportunity to highlight our Inishown Job Fair that's on this Saturday, uh, April 20th, in the Inishown Gateway Hotel from 10 to 1. Uh, and we're really calling out for all job seekers, re- recent graduates, school leavers, or anyone looking for a change in their career to come along uh, this Saturday and hear from the wide range of high-quality employment opportunities there are available. Um, yeah. Maybe uh, to set the context of where I came about. I'll uh, just get out of here. You don't yeah. need me, uh, <laughs> Sinead. I'll just go. I'll be back in five minutes. Is that uh, all right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Anna, yep. what do you mean? Perfect, be nice. Mm. <laughs> no, it's oh, I'm only joking. Yeah. No, Sinead, set the context for it. Yeah, please. so really within our in, in business initiative, we mm. can engage with the local employers and SMEs within uh, the peninsula. And again and again, recruitment comes back as the main challenge. 
And, and the flip side of that, we have our employment support team that actively engage with the job seekers on a daily basis with that uh, employment strategy. So the both pull of people were there. So we kind of put our heads together and how we would get an avenue for both of them to link in together uh, for the beneficial of all. Mm. Uh, we put a call out to our local employers and we were kind of overwhelmed. Yeah, I'm interested it. in how many local employers, not a specific number, mm-hmm. but, you know, the level of interest uh, in this. You put the call out. You were surprised by the response We really levels. were surprised and it was really about the depth of the... The active, uh, the varied vacancies across multiple sectors. Yeah. But probably one thing, because Anna now is kind of going to link in with who's in the room and the type of vacancies, but maybe to get across uh, active uh, and immediate uh, and multiple, all the stand holders on the day have multiple vacancies. And a lot of them have immediate to quote one employer. Um, if they get the right candidate on Saturday, they would be commencing com- you know, employment the following Straight week. Away. So yeah. that's there's a lot of opportunities out there. And but Anna, it can be a bit of a maze you know i mean like linkedin is there and stuff but Mm -hmm. i mean i I don't really i don't really find that easy to engage with personally i haven't really tried but that's a a me problem uh uh, or or newspapers or whatever and i know there's job spots but there is a lot of availability of 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 employment right and there's lots of people looking for jobs maybe it's something they were very passionate about or qualified in and then they took a different direction or what have you this is a great opportunity to get all of those people in under the one roof um, as part of our in-business series, um, we discussed an awful lot with our local employers because we have some very long established businesses in Anishon and they're looking to sustain their business, but also to have a pathway for their employees to grow. So then they also need, you know, to be able to fuel that with, with new people as well. So that was really, really important for them. Um, I think whenever, like, we've 20 employers going to be in the room. Wow, okay. Uh-huh. Um, over 170 jobs mm-hmm. that we know of that are active. Ready. Uh, so that's Shane said, ready uh-huh. to go. Mm-hmm. Can you give us an idea of some of the areas that mm-hmm. these employers yeah. are in? Uh, I'll give you, I have a list here of the employers, like, if you don't mind me no, just go ahead, going through yeah. them. So, HML Plant and Construction, um, they have a huge number of jobs, both available locally here in the Northwest, but also across in, in England. Forward emphasis um, are going to double their workforce between Malin and um, uh, Boncrana this year. They've taken 60 on and have another 40 posts going mm-hmm. out now. Uh, McDade's Bathroom and Plumbing, Frames Direct, one of our long standing employers, along with Lynch Windows and um, in a shown engineer. You know, they're the ones, they're the, the, the jobs that are, you know, steady there and they're actively recruiting from school leavers right the way through to professional services within that um and efficient renewables you know and and just thinking like along the lines of if you became a joiner tomorrow you know you'd be thinking i'm going to go out into construction site and everything else efficient renewables are looking for apprentice joiners uh, apprentice electricians um and everything so there's on the job training as, as well, well. Yeah, do you know okay. what i mean and it's in all of the different areas of construction so you might have you know, did your training for one specific job. But think about that. It's like a doctor specialising in an area. Mm-hmm. You can also do that. So from for school leavers especially, looking at the opportunities within these employers. To build actually a a um, a, a, a career, a, a skill. Yeah. Uh-huh. Something. Mm-hmm. So we have Vertiv, um, which a lot of people would know as E&I Engineering, um, Lynch Windows and a shown co-op. Uh, we a couple of accountancy firms, MLMG, and um, uh, that's McGonagall, McGo- McGonagall, McLaughlin, McLaughlin and McGuinness O'Neill Accountants, North Fox Facilities. Um, and yeah. it's a guy James Grant down in Clamani. Now he started li- literally on the back of COVID, and it was really like he's commissioning the work that's mm. that's done by E and I Engineering all over the world. Right. So you know that's what I'm saying. It's Yes, and we have even the like of the Nishon Gateway Hotel. So it's, uh, you know, it's cross important sectors. that they're so cross-sector. That's mm. it, Sinead, and, and it's also cross-skill sets, uh, oh. from school louvers to people who might be qualified in certain areas. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think people should exclude themselves from this process, Not, go along and see what matches. Really, you know. really, as I said, we kind of really refer to it, skilled and unskilled, and it's kind of not... We're, we're, the aim of the job fair as well is to allow people to come uh, talk, 
directly to the employer, see what opportunities it is out there because there is a lot of vacancies in our county. You know, if there is a skills gap, our employment supports team will be there on hand. We have to deal with people with their CV if there's a gap and we can provide that referral process and what is the need and provide that um, high quality service. Um, also, as well as of our, our, our large vacancy of employers in the room, we will have a, a jobs wall. You know, we, we regularly do that. So our employment supports team will be managing that and helping the people. So a wide range a varied. So if you're unemployed and looking for it, but again, it's, it's, it's the recent graduates as well. We have a high level of uh, professional post out there as well yeah you know and even also though you know you can get stuck in a rut too in in a, in a working environment you yeah. know and and we don't want to take work workers away from any established business no. don't get me wrong but if someone's working for you and they're not happy maybe it's better that they move on who's yeah, to say so, so the, you know go in look around and, and see if something catches your interest uh, like we have um kingsbridge private um, hospitals mm. and they're going to be there and they're looking for all across the northwest you know both letter kenny and um valley kelly but then you have um you know irish home care they're looking for cares so from you know health care is such a big area you know and you know it's all about that whole career progression mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. you know you want people to be able to uh, you know really enjoy what they do and as you say if they need or want to move or get a nice injection of energy by moving mm -hmm. somewhere else they're bringing that well, energy with see, them you can also uh -huh. look at someone in the white of their eyes and see what uh, what they can bring to you and what yes. you can bring uh -huh. to it's them and and of course this is in a shown development partnership uh, and this is based in in a show home, but who's to say people won't travel uh, well, to yeah, this event? Yeah, and that's you what know? you know. That is, you know, hopefully this will and highlight lots today. Of people, does people travel from Derry down yeah. to work in Abbots and Donegal Town? And yes. a, a lot of you the know? positions is over the county. Do you know? And a lot of the big employers that Anna's really referred to have positions, yes, in in a show home, but uh, uh, many of the positions is based in Letterkenny mm -hmm. or more county wide, and some even as possibilities for overseas. So uh, yeah, we really are. Um, we really are calling out for anybody uh, that's in the in the county at all that would w mm. wish to avail, mm -hmm. uh, please please come along. North, North and South. Yeah, North and South, yeah, yes. yes. And, and I'm right in saying too that uh, this is obviously for people in and shown that there's some transport links to yes, the event. Yes, so it would be good to highlight that because we are closing that. So we are, just so that the job fair is accessible to all, we know transport can be a barrier for some job seekers. So we are um, putting on um, transport um, from Maville, Cairndonna, Ballyluffin, Muff and Burnfoot area. We do, the, our only ask on that is that we have to, there is our booking on More our numbers, socials, yeah, on, our, on our Facebook yeah. and on our Instagram and with our uh, PR Katie there, um, down there. But if we are asking that if you could um, book book that by this afternoon we are closing that to kind of manage the logistics on that tomorrow or ring in to our reception and Maureen and Marie will gladly take your details this afternoon and of course that also recognising that there are people who have moved to Bonkrana to Inishon recently as well you're engaging with uh, um, the Ukrainian communities ETC to see if any of these positions match we are yes and we will have yeah we will have our, our connecting community officers are both linking in with that and a it's well well promoted and we will have all them uh, on the day as well and we as i said our employment support team will be able to help them in relation to any job ready uh, supports they needed in their cv um to, to prepare them to submit so we're asking people as well to come with their cv greg um you know if you're coming from letter kenny and you have cv because employers are going to actively accept them on the day if you don't have it don't let that be a barrier. You know, the employers will take your contact details directly. And again, you can link in with our, with our team that will do your CV or make an appointment and we can submit that. But if you do have your CV, bring it with you. We are really hoping that... opportunity is ready to go. Uh, yeah, and, we're and hoping of course that... that assists in that yeah. regard. Uh, Anna, um, it's uh, the Jobs Fair gets underway in the initial on Gatewood. Gateway Hotel in Bongrana from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Saturday. Saturday so yes. short window, you're not asking uh -huh. for a big commitment. Yep. Uh, this April, uh, the 20th, of course, which is Saturday, free. 
to attend and open to everyone as we've been out. It is, and the weather's going to be interview. good on Saturday, so nobody has any excuses yeah. for coming. Yeah, could be the day you meet your next potential employer, and yeah, we indeed. definitely will be there to give you a warm welcome and assist you in whatever way we can. All right, so get along if uh, any of that interests you, and I imagine some people it's probably even just the conversation has lit a little, lit yep. a little fire underneath them. Because I, as I said, right from the very beginning, uh, it's connecting the right people to the right, right jobs. jobs. And it can be you know, a minefield uh-huh. to we, try we and find it yourself. the amount of talent there is there in the engineering sphere. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, and, you know, there's just so many jobs and possibilities mm. um, right the way f- through from the apprenticeship all the yeah, way through. To, and uh, even, you know, our, as I said, our two big accountancy firms there, they're, you know, trying to get them before we maybe go to Australia because they have that accountant apprenticeships, you know, available as well. So, Maybe any parents listening in that might mm-hmm. want to avail what opportunity might be there as well for their um, for their maybe senior students that leave in cert year. That are no, come along and, yeah. you know, engage and, mm-hmm. and see what opportunities is out there yet. Because, of course, you know, I mean, obviously we always have to highlight where there are deficiencies, right? Mm-hmm. But we also, too, have to celebrate where, you know, it is a beautiful part of the place to yeah. live. It is, it's expensive, right? But it's not the most expensive. Yeah. There are good job opportunities here. I think what, you know, for a lot of people, you can get a job. Uh, you can then apply for a credit union loan or whatever, and you can sort of get on the yeah, road. I know yeah. it's a struggle. I'm not trying to make out it's easy either, but also we don't want to make out that it's impossible. We agree, you can yeah. progress yourself yeah. here, there is. Uh, and there are opportunities out there. And we can, I suppose, we as adults have to take responsibility too to ensure that we talk equally about the positives as we we have to highlight the yeah, gaps, yeah. don't we? But yeah, you know, at the same time, we do have to say. There's, yeah. there's quite a bit going on too. And there is, a, and probably, you know, as Anna already alluded to, like there is about conservative, conservatively 170 vacancies available there on Saturday. You know, so that is an opportunity to be highlighted, uh, you know. And these these companies are companies that have been working, you know, long term and Anna showing you know, that they're well established oh, yeah. you know yeah. and you know the thing about it is they want to continue to be Listen, there it's, it's such mm-hmm. an important point mm-hmm. you make Anna because in the past you know mm-hmm. um uh, we had a situation as often when we talked about um job creation right or job opportunities mm-hmm. it was maybe money was thrown at a startup or mm-hmm. something yeah. uh runs for a year money runs out jobs go w- here we're talking about Businesses that, that have yeah. mm-hmm. a, a long-term history yeah. and and significant business and growth mm-hmm. plans going forward, uh, and as I say, it's good to see us moving to, to that, that. You know, mm-hmm. I, yeah, I think. yeah, yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. listen, um, Sinead, check out Inishown Development Partnership if you want, uh, and I think you have to be quick on this if you want to see if there are transport, transport options for yeah, you. Transport that has still to be, available. The yeah. numbers have to be finalised there and what have you, but uh, there are options there for people within the Inishown area, and uh, look forward to it Saturday. Anna has promised is Anne or Anna? Anna 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 has promised us good weather Yes, yes, we absolutely. will. Yeah. It's always so, the sun's always shining. And you'll, and have, shown, and you'll have the, the, the <laughs> lovely uh, back set of the, of the beach behind mm-hmm. you, so that mm-hmm. will be, yeah. And then afterwards, me and Anna are going to get into our cozies and jump off the beach. <laughs> <laughs> no? Okay. I can't. Well, everything, was, wait, I, every, everything's uh, everything, uh, ready for everything Saturday. Everything until there was perhaps definitely. <laughs> it was okay. I'll take the photographic evidence. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You can post it on your what, what, ha- what happens in a show stays in a I like it. But come here, Anna, I think there's going to be a great buzz, and I think it's going to be really uh, yeah, well attended. Uh, and Sinead, both you yeah, and Anna, you can, you can... And we can will be there on the day. Yeah. Uh-huh. And yeah. do maybe, Greg, if anybody is, follow us on our socials, because we are doing a spotlight of each one of our employers over the next couple of days. Uh, Katie is running that, so follows on our Facebook or our Instagram page. To learn page. a bit more about the companies that are going to be companies there. Companies that's going yeah. to be there, yeah. Yeah, and some of these are, are good conditions. I think, you know, it's. A, mm-hmm. uh, I think employers know that you have to look after your employees now to, yeah. to hire and retain, yeah. so there's good options. As there. part of our in business series, we've been working with the employers for the last number of years, and, you know, they really are putting so, so much, much effort, yeah, effort yeah. into making sure that, Brilliant. you know, that the right conditions mm. are there to, to get the people and keep got, them. It helps mm-hmm. that they've got the, uh, the IDP to work with as well well too do you know what i mean yeah uh, no we you is, know we're in business it's yeah good, but it's, it's good it's enjoyable yeah. it yeah, really so. is because okay. you know they they do they 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 work very hard in the job that they do mm-hmm. but they also you know, they work 
as well collaboratively yeah. with, each, with each other, you know, as well. Well, you're doing great things mm -hmm. up there. We've, we were up with you not so long ago, and it's uh, great to have you down here, do, and, yeah. and you do great things, and we really appreciate you coming down and being good sports as well. Sinead McDade, uh, Team Lead and Enterprise Officer with Initial and Development Partnership, and Anna McColgan, uh, Employment Engagement Officer with the IDP as well. Both of you, thank you so much. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Greg. We'll thank be you. back with more after these. Watch the show live now on YouTube, Facebook, and at highlandradio.com. The Nine Till Noon Show with Letterkenny Credit Union. Now offering mortgages from 40,000 to 600,000 euro with no hidden fees or transaction charges. Letterkenny Credit Union, 9102127. Foy & Company, Bally Buffet in Letterkenny are the largest stockists of interior and exterior paint in the Northwest. If you're planning a painting project and need help picking the right colour and brand of paint for your home or commercial premises, call in and ask our qualified paint colour consultants, interior designers and interior stylists. The team at Foy & Company, Bally Buffet and Letterkenny will be delighted to help. Easy Living Furniture's biggest ever roadshow sale is here. Come discover the amazing roadshow deals such as all sofas reduced, all dining reduced, all bedroom reduced, all mattresses reduced, and with interest-free finance available. This is one sale not to be missed. The spectacular roadshow sale with absolutely everything reduced is now on at Easy Living Furniture, Crescent Link Retail Park, or online at easylivingfurniture.co.uk. Get ready to experience the ultimate tribute to the king of rock and roll. The Elvis Spectacular Show is coming to Encourage Hotel on Saturday, April 27th. Tickets priced at €25 Euro are available from Eventbrite and Encourage Hotel Reception. With Big Scoop Ice Cream at Kelly Steiner in Letterkenny, there's so much choice. From Bubblegum Blast to Oreo Crunch, named after Kelly's famous robot waiter, there's loads of flavours to choose from, or you can create your own. Treat the kids and the big kids to a yummy ice cream dessert at Kelly's Diner, Mountaintop, Letterkenny. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to roll out the red carpet and celebrate the best and brightest in the business world. It's time for the Highland Radio Customer Service Awards in association with Michael Henney's Department Store. From your local community centre, your favourite takeaway to your go-to pet shop, we're recognising the businesses that go the extra mile for you. This award is a great way to show your appreciation for the businesses that make a difference in your life. But you better act fast. The deadline for entries is just around the corner. So visit our website and nominate now. Nominations close Tuesday the 23rd of April. The awards will take place on the 2nd of June. Now I'm sure... Uh... Uh, I'm not sure what, if anything, is in this, but got a few uh, messages um, just after 11 o'clock from people in the Trusk Loch area to say they heard a very loud bang that seemed to shake houses. This was just after 11 o'clock. Now, I'm not sure if this is something that someone uh, felt locally or, or it's broader than that, but uh, I believe that's in the Battle of Face Granola area, Trusk Loch, Trusk Loch. But if you are in that area, you heard a loud bang. Maybe the, the people talked about maybe the house shook a little bit. Get in touch with us. Let us know if you felt that. 0866 25,000 or call 0749 125,000. Now, we heard from uh, Sandra Pauline O'Reilly a little earlier on that she uh, raised the issue of cold caps, which can uh, be effective for some in uh, reducing hair loss during cancer treatment, particularly during um, chemotherapy. And um, we're joined on the program now by Sally. Hi, Sally. Hello, Greg. Thank you very um, much for answering very the nervous. call. Every day, don't be nervous, Sally. Every day is a learning day for me, so I really appreciate you uh, coming on. Right, okay. So you, it's all right for us to talk about your cancer, isn't it? You got cancer. I surely, okay. I never bother. So you got you, you found out that you had cancer in 2015, 2016. Is that correct? Yeah, I found out in 2015, okay. and then I had to have uh, two. Um, a routine uh, mammogram, mm -hmm. and uh, then I had that in Galway because uh, Little Kenny was uh, quite busy, so uh, Galway was taking up the extra appointments then. I had it in Galway, and um, then the uh, within about an hour and a half, two hours, they told me that I had uh, breast cancer, mm -hmm. and which I was devastated because nobody could feel a lump. My GP, uh, the registrar that had examined me in Galway, I couldn't find anything. 
So they did the bio, the, the ultrasound, the biopsy, and although it took three weeks for the biopsy to come back, but they did say they were 99.9% sure that it was cancer. Mm. And um, because I uh, I was sent in to Letter Kenny, uh, to the consultant there, but uh, because I was living on my own and the bloods could go down during chemo and you could become quite ill quite quickly, you need to have somebody in the house. So I went then to live with my daughter um, just outside the Sligo in uh, Bunny Conlon and she teaches down there and uh, I was sent to Sligo then, uh, which was great. I had the cold cap, that was January 16, and I had the cold cap. But well, before we talk about the, the, the cold cap and the experience, Sally, everybody's yeah. different, OK, and deals with things yeah. in a different way. How much yeah. of a factor in your mind was the, 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 the loss of your hair during treatment? Like, it was it, well, sure, it's part of it, I'll have to get through it, it or was, was it very distressful for you? It was distressful. Okay. When I was first diagnosed, I didn't ask how bad it was. Uh, will I ever die? How long have I got? I just said, what about me hair? Wow, isn't it amazing how, how, how some things are so uh, uh, important? Yeah. Okay. It was just the main thing because I thought I didn't want, want to look as if I had cancer. I got yeah. pretty looks and all the rest of it. And I thought, no, if I can get something. So there was a breast care nurse who was retiring in Sligo mm-hmm. and of course when I went to see the consultant in Sligo that was the very first question as well. What about my hair? So um, they mentioned then they had the cold cap and I'd never heard tell of it. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was, now it's very cold. You need to be a crayon like myself to stick it <laughs> out. It's, um, you get a brain freeze. Yeah. But I got used to it and I'd stick me bits of gauze in and before it so it, it doesn't hurt the forehead and it goes on and it's on about 20 minutes to half an hour before your treatment starts and it freezes the hair follicles and then it's on again for another maybe half hour or so after you finish your treatment so now, it doesn't so, work dur- so, so during uh, so during that chemotherapy process it greatly s- reduces the flood of flow of blood to your sca- yeah. scalp but presumably that's where for some uh, it's effective Yes. So right. you had it 15... up to something like... Sorry. No, no, I was just going to say, Sally, you were telling us that you put it on for 15 minutes before each chemotherapy treatment. No, it's, 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 no, it's normally 20 minutes to half an hour. OK. And you have to have that on first before you start your chemo. And you, you, it's called a cold cap. Uh, it's a freezing yes. cap. It's very cold. Yes. Um, uh, it's, so... hooked, it's hooked up to antifreeze. Right. Some people was some people have said that the the headaches were so bad that uh, it wasn't worth it for them. But I, I think you described yourself as being tran enough to stick it out. Well, that was it. Uh, the first day that I had it on, the first day was fine because you just you damp your hair before you put it on. Mm-hmm. The second day, I thought to myself, "Well, I'm going to make sure this works." So I um, I soaked the hair, and it was like a brain freeze. Yeah. So the nurse came round and she said, look, you're freezing, I'm taking this off. I said, no, indeed, you're not. <laughs> and uh, she said, you're cold. I said, yes, you can give me a cup of tea, you can give me a blanket, I, you're not taking it off. So she came back again, 10 minutes later, she says, do you have a headache? I said, yeah, but you can give me something for that too. Mm. And um, I, I just got used to ways in. If you put in a bit of gauze around the forehead and it didn't hit onto your skin, that's how I cope with it. I suppose it's like everything, Sally. I mean, lots of people now seem to be doing, and it's not to do with cancer treatment, but jumping into barrels of ice and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, I suppose you no, get used... I don't used... think I'd do that. No, neither would I, but I think you get used to, to anything as such. So you had it on um, before all of your chemotherapy treatments, and yes. it worked for you, did it? It worked for me. It was a, it was a godsend for me. It really was. And it meant then uh, I could, I didn't think of, of the cancer. I could go for my walks. I could, you know, I drove mm. my car a few days after the, the chemo. But again, as you say, as, you know, I'm trying, I just wanted life to go as normal. Of course, that was the way you were t- dealing with your diagnosis and treatment. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. Um, that all went well for you, thankfully, uh, in terms of treatment as well, yeah. because you're in, in great oh, fitting I, now. I, thankfully. The only downside of the chemo was the taste. Mm-hmm. Yeah, might as well chew a bit of wood as 
you know, have your dinner. The taste, the loss of taste was, uh, that was hard to deal with. Did that return for you? I've heard others who never returned for. Oh, yes, it did. Come, I had I had six chemo yeah. uh, and six doses of chemo and every three weeks. Now, come the, coming towards the end of the the second week, two and a half weeks, maybe the taste would return. Mm. Uh, but then as soon as you got the chemo, that went again. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, listen, uh, Sally, thank you so much for your experience, uh, for sharing your experience. Senator Pauline O'Reilly... No, so Senator of, pa- uh, she's, of, yeah, she, I was going to say, Senator Pauline O'Reilly said that she raised this and our Health Minister Stephen Donnelly had never heard of it. I was a wee bit shocked at but, that. That... That's that's what prompted me uh, to ring, um, because I thought to myself, if this is going, and now I had it in two sixteen, in Sligo, obviously it's going a long time before that. And how come he doesn't know anything about it? And I always said, if I had the good sense to win money, I would definitely get one for Letter Kenny. It is. The, the greatest thing for women and in actual fact when I was up there there was a gentleman mm. in the same, you mm. know, in the chemo ward and uh, he had on the cold cap no way. So you were so, so moved by like, your experience that you, if you had come on money you would have provided it so people in Letterkenny could have had it I think it's the most fantastic thing for women. Yeah. Now as I say it doesn't work for all treatment mm-hmm. but to me, it was the greatest thing, and I keep telling everybody about it, and even hairdressers I go to, and I always mention it to them. Do you know if they would have patients coming in? Apparently, it was um, designed by a German doctor and his sons because it's um, th- their mother had cancer and lost her hair, yes. and she was so devastated that this is called the Pac-Man cold cap. Uh-huh. Okay. And they designed this, that's the German design, they designed this cap way back, I don't know, year or whatever, do you know? Well, I think it's fascinating it's fantastic. And, and, and I'm really pleased that it worked for you, especially given, uh, as you said in your own words, that that was almost the, the, the main thing you were thinking about. And I'm really, really pleased, Sally, uh, that that uh, your treatment went well for you and that you're in great form. So thank you very much for calling in and chatting to me. No bother at all, and I hope it helps somebody else. No, I'm sure it will, because it's a great endorsement. Thanks, Sally. Um, now, some other comments. Uh, hi, Greg. We're waiting 14 months on getting back on 90% from paying €6,500. When we ring to inquire when we'll be reimbursed, a new requirement is asked for. If we didn't ring, we'd never be informed. Uh, absolutely soul-destroying. Greg, I can only speak about my own situation, but the scheme is far from smooth. I'm very soon going to be at a standstill due to money not being paid out. Would the council councillors work for weeks on end without receiving payments? Why are builders expected to? We as homeowners have jumped through hoop after hoop to get to this rebuild stage to now be told not enough information on one invoice and a few weeks later too much information on another. Stalling tactics at their best. It's an absolute joke, believes this list. I hope the scheme is running smoothly for some, but it certainly is not the case for me or my family. It's a living nightmare. And by the way, can I say we're very keen to listen to, or I'm very keen to hear from people uh, who it is working smoothly for uh, as well, by the way. Very important uh, for that to be highlighted. Also, Ali Farron is a homeowner and a candidate uh, for the 100% Redress Party. And he had uh, this to say via voice note. Morning, Greg. Um, Ali Farron here, and I was out canvassing yesterday and met a builder who says he's inundated with people looking for him to rebuild houses, but he says he can't afford to get, even get on, you know, to consider them because of the lack of money and the length of time he has to wait to get paid. Um, so this is this is what we're finding all over North and he's shown. Um, there's just lots of things not working with this present scheme at the moment, and you can understand why builders do not want to get involved with this scheme if they're going to have to wait for money because they... The building provider, the person who provides the blocks, the concrete, the roof, or whatever, he's looking for his money within a month. So why can't the council not keep the the, the funds flowing to, to deliver that? All right, Ali Farron via voice note there, by the way. And the voice note option is available to all of you, uh, by the way. If you've got, uh, even if you want to play a request for someone, um, do you know what I mean? Uh, lots of people sending requests for people celebrating special days. Uh, feel free to 
WhatsApp that. I want it to be absolutely clear that all of our lines of communication are for requests, for comments, for shout outs, anything that you want to use it for. There's nothing like a request in your own voice, is there? And I also want to play a request for uh, Shelley McFadden and Liam Holian. They're getting married today, uh, so a beautiful day for them, and hopefully they have a wonderful uh, future ahead. That's for Shelley McFadden and Liam Hullion, I believe his name is. They're getting married uh, today. So, as I say, the voice notes, 86 20, and your voice notes to that number, be it a comment, be it a query, be it a request or dedication for someone, don't be shy. Uh, best wishes uh, to Shelley McFadden and Liam Hullion, uh, who are getting married today. From mum, dad and all the family, any possibility of play, uh, playing shout up and da- shut up? Shout up. Shut up and dance with me. Shut up and dance with me. I can't play it, but I uh, will certainly pass it on to uh, either John or David, and they'll get, uh, hopefully, they'll get out. But anyway, Shelley and Liam, have a wonderful day. Hope the celebrations go really, really well, and uh, best of luck with everything going forward. The 9 Till Noon Show is brought to you by Letterkenny Credit Union. Offering low-rate car loans with fast approval. Apply online at letterkennycu.ie or in office today. Big news. The Centra Big Brand Sale is now on with big savings on the big brands you love. Like Nestle Cheerios Multigrain 390 gram, half price now 2 29 Le Perrier Cote de Genois, now 10 euro. And Centra Fresh Air Sirloin Steak 454 gram, now 6 euro. Centra. Live every day. Enjoy your call sensibly. Looking for that Hoka experience? Try the new range at bmcsports.ie. New Arahi 7, Clifton 9 or the Eversoft Bondi 8. Step into our safe size experience so you can fit the best trainer for your foot. Let us make your trainer experience the best it can be. Brian McCormick Sports, Main Street, Letterkenny. Join the team at Homeland Letterkenny for their garden Super Saturday this Saturday 20th. Meet the expert Homeland Garden team and enjoy exclusive offers in store, including lawn edging 2 for 35 euro, decorative stone 10% off, and there's true timber hand tools 20% off. All this and much more. For details, see homeland.ie. Charge into summer with TUI. Secure your holiday today with savings for families and adults flying from Dublin, Cork and Shannon. Holiday sorted. TUI. Live happy. Lorraine, what's the story with all the Pat the Baker sourdough packs framed on your wall? What? They're my diplomas. Diplomas? I've taken a lot of tests, you know, for deliciousness, for freshness, for flavour, for taste. Sorry, tests. You need to butter up your act and take the crusty craving taste test with the new Pat the Baker sourdough bread. Go on, be a taste champion. Pat the Baker, so fresh it's famous. Pat the Baker, fresh it's famous. Highland Radio weather updates brought to you by McElhenney's. With over 50 years of serving the community in Donegal, McElhenney's is proud to be part of every moment, big and small. Support local, shop McElhenney's Bally Buffet. OK, so the weather forecast for today, mostly dull and damp, with outbreaks of patchy rain and drizzle at times through the day. Temperatures 8 to 11 degrees and a moderate westerly wind, increasing fresh west to northwest. Hey, you got to feel for all the people who uh, fix and repair lawnmowers. Uh, you know the people, uh, and I'm probably one of them, you uh, last cut, probably, what, when would the last cut be? Maybe start of August, maybe the end of August. You chuck the lawnmower into the shed, don't it, or into wherever you can store the lawnmower. And then the next time you see it is around about now, as soon as the weather forecast predicts a little bit of sun, you pull it out, you try and give it a pull, the rope breaks or the blades are stuck or whatever, and we all land in our thousands to the local uh, lawnmower repair shop. So they're going to get some rush, I think, over the next uh, few days. So we wish them well and they can make uh, hay, financial hay, whilst the sun shines. And then there are those of you out there, of course, who were very responsible and got it serviced whilst they were quieter. I want to say good morning to Hugh. Hiya, Hugh. Uh, Good morning, Craig. It's great to have you on the programme, Hugh. Now, uh, you're, you're, tell us the situation that you found yourself in, and it's really some damage to your property and your dealings then with an insurance company. So you tell us the story from wherever you're comfortable, yeah. Hugh. Yeah, uh, Craig, I was like, I sit at the fire, light the fire every evening, and, uh, you know, and from five o'clock on, you know, and well, the winter day I have it on all the time, you know. But uh, 
I was sitting here a couple of a couple of weeks back, and they were sitting here and let the fire, and oh, God bless us, the smoke and smoke, and uh, how they open doors and f- uh, smoke alarms going off and all. So I uh, rang me son, I live alone, I rang me son, and uh, he came down, and we got the thing in uh, out, you know, and uh, the fire out, and he put his hand on round uh, I said to him, could you lift that uh, draft out altogether and she might go. But he put his hand on round the draft in the and there were a pile of stones and flu pieces, you know, came out or was there. So we, he left them out and we filled nearly a bum bag. So that was okay. He, uh, the other son came down the following day and he says he would go up to the chimney and he would see if there's anything wrong up there. So he took a crowbar up and he tried to push things down to try and release it and no good. So that was okay. The following day I contacted the and chimney brother. And just before we get to that, Hugh, if you don't mind, you effectively then yeah. had a chimney fire which damaged uh, damaged the flue inside the chimney as well. Thankfully, you had your sons on hand and your fire alarms and everything, but it was effectively yeah. a chimney fire that you had. No, it wasn't. Uh, that was the... Uh, I can honestly say, like, um, I wouldn't tell lies about it, the whole the flues has collapsed, you okay. know, and lost the chimney. Do you know? So that was okay. We were all oh, like, as I say, we didn't know what to do then. So we, uh, I decided then, right, I'll contact uh, the insurance broker. And certainly so. They said they'll send somebody out. And the couple of days after, the fellow was out, I think, drove from Galway to, uh, I think he made a stay in the Guinea that night, and uh, <laughs> he came here the next morning at half ten, and oh, up in the attic, he took photos up in the attic, he took photos out down here, and he took photos of the kitchen, he went up to the chimney, and he took the what he called, he took the the thing off, you know, that you try to keep the birds out or whatever. You know, so that was all. He was a great way to tell you, Sean, uh, I thought I couldn't have met a nicer man. So, lo, lo and behold, he away he went and he says to me, he says, uh, he says um, next week or the week after, he says, you'll be getting a check on the post. So off the, the back of company. that, presumably then, because you need your fire, Hugh, off the back of that, oh, then did you start I, sorting I, materials and stuff? I would, of course, I'm a son real, like I've no fire, no nothing, I've, I've a blow heater, electric heater, and all, I've, I've oil heating, but a son must house 60 years, do you know what I mean? There's not one heat, nothing, do you know? But like, uh, that was okay then, so... Um, I was sitting back then for a week or a fortnight waiting on this check to come through so that I would be able to, able to get somebody to fix me, you know, fix the gym line all, you know. And uh, they have to bore holes on the wall and take out the uh, old flues and put on new flues and that. Uh, it's a whole big job and wallpaper and all has to come out off because it's that big a job, no much shit and dirt, you know. Mm. So then uh, I got a letter in from an insurance company then stating, stating that uh, to contact such a person and so I did the next day and I, what I called, I was told that I wasn't covered, is that uh, the, um, the what it called, uh, the assessor to, uh, sent in a report and says it was blocked with boards and ass. Well, I can assure you, and anybody knows anything about wildlife, the crows doesn't start to build to March or the middle of March, they're building from, and let me tell you, just 
Well, the click of your fingers, my, what do you call it, my fire started to smoke. And like that, that had happened in the middle of the night, and me and the fire on, I'd have been dead today. And God you know, forbid because, that would have happened, Hugh, but your son was up hoking up up with the, the crowbar. Do you think yeah. that made it look worse than it actually was? In other oh, words, if the insurance... No, I, uh, uh, OK, as, uh, for the assessor, that was handy for him because he turned around and he to, told the insurance company that it was was the crowbar on the damage that pushed the nest down, the board's nest down and blocked the chimney. Yeah, but that well, was after the it, fact. Uh, that was afterwards. That was that, uh, that was afterwards, you know, but like as I say as I say, I'm left now now that uh, I have to try and get it sorted for myself and like fair play to the lady. I was talking to the lady uh, um of the insurance company, you know, the, the gentleman was to look after me, it wouldn't come on or didn't come on and uh, okay. and like and I I was nice enough to the girl and uh, I apologize to the girl. Well, listen, Hugh, Pardon? you're a gentleman. Of course you're going to be nice to them, and maybe sometimes yeah. maybe you're, you're too honest for your own good. But anyway, listen, yeah. we're, we're going... Yeah. I know that your your health is not fantastic, and I know that you very much rely on this fire, and it's been over a week since you were able to light this fire. Yeah. We're going yeah. to get on to the insurance so, company and, and on the off chance uh, we can appeal to their... Uh, we're going to get into the insurance company on the off chance that it appeals to their better judgment and can understand the situation you're in and, and, and can, can can pay it out. I'm not sure that's going to work, Hugh, but I think at this point it's all... If I could do it, I'd call Rand and do it right now for you, but I can't. But we can try with the insurance company and see what the story is, Hugh. Yeah, I would appreciate that, Greg, because I'm sitting here now, I have no fire, no nothing. Uh, as I say, I have to try and get somebody to do this, and I'm going to be out of pocket for at least, at least maybe £3,000, because okay. the house is going to be, have to be decorated and all. And okay. Like, as I say, I, I just can't afford it. Okay, you know, of course, yes. you. Of course. Listen, leave it with us, all right? And I'm sorry you're going through this. It's distressful. Uh, yeah. But as I say, um, thank you so much for talking to us. Leave it with us. We'll chase it up on the off chance it might be able to help in some way or other. But that's uh, Hugh, an older person uh, living on his own, obviously loves the fire every evening but can't light the fire. Um, and the insurance company say they won't per pay out because it's down to bird nests. Okay, we're, uh, we'll look at that. Uh, we're back tomorrow morning at nine. Have a great day, everyone. The 